26th uh, Board of Selectmen meeting. We'll open tonight as we usually do with liaison reports, <coughs> public comment, and a report from the town manager. We have um, posted items uh, on the schoolhouse common sign request, an update on economic development, a, uh, a return on a discussion of, um, I'm sorry, a discussion on the 75 Pearl Street lease agreement as it relates to the town interest on soccer fields and parking and access to that uh, facility. Um, we had posted uh, a hearing, which I'll speak more to in a moment. We'll close the warrant for November town meeting. We'll discuss the uh, Board of Selectmen Policies Article 3 licensing. And we'll have a discussion on um, town meeting instructional motion update from RMLD. You might remember there was a discussion on town floor regards uh, payments uh, due Reading Light, due uh, the town from Reading Light. Um, and we'll hear from Carl McFadden. Um, uh, on that as well. Before we proceed, I just want to uh, remind the community on October 3rd, um, a newly formed citizen group, uh, uh, Reading Embraces Diversity, will host a, a community get-together. Uh, notices are posted on, I, I know the elder services, I believe the town's got a posting, the schools have a posting, and uh, I'll be attending and I'd urge my colleagues to, as well as those listening tonight. Um, uh, there will be a variety of speakers, including uh, religious leaders, uh, uh, folks from the, from the town side and school side as well. So folks have worked hard putting this together, and I'd urge uh, those to attend. It'll be a, a, a good evening. Um, uh, shortly before this meeting... Um, John, if I might say something. Yes, I'm sorry, Bob. Um, I met with uh, Dr. Doherty today and Chief Sagala. And I wanted to pass along some of their thoughts right now because we're um, troubled by some of the comments we've seen and we've heard in the community. Um, and feel free to ask either Dr. Doherty or Chief Sagala what, what I'm about to say, whether they agree or not. Um, this seems to be somewhat of an effort to divide the three of us. We are all one Reading. We are one Reading. We don't do competing press releases. We work together. Um, each of us has a very different job description. Each of us has different life experience and, and different skills. Uh, each of us personally have weaknesses and hopefully we have a few good points. But I will tell you the one thing that I know from my peers and from their peers that is true. There is no group of three in that position that work more closely together than those in Reading. And that you can also check with neighboring communities or any other community you like. Um, we're not in the business of issuing competing press releases. We work together on every single one of them. There's only been one exception to that. When I got some intelligence on a Friday from a neighboring community that a, a hate group or a white supremacist group in Boston might be coming to Reading or to some northern suburb, within a half hour I had to throw together a press release and tell the police chief his name was now on it, and I did not have time to contact the superintendent. If you recall, there was a very small protest as it turned out for the <coughs> supremacists in Boston a few weekends ago in a very large counter demonstration and I was very glad that no one came to Reading to you know, certainly do the white supremacist act but I felt it was incumbent on me and the police department to make sure the community felt safe that if anything did happen they knew how to reach out to any of us um, they should be a little bit extra cautious perhaps based on what they saw so that was the one press release that did not involve John and perhaps rightly so, he, he agrees. So I just want to make sure to the community as a whole that the three of us work very well together and very closely together on any issue. And the issue of uh, anti-Semitism and racial hatred that has come up over the last several months on what happens to be school property is equally important to all three of us. And none of us feel the need to claim credit for any actions. We are all trying to act in the best interests of the entire town. And I just want to make sure that that message gets out loud and clear. Thank you. And that's on behalf of John and Mark. Thank you. To that same, I'm sorry. To that same point, um, the event on October 3rd will feature superintendent, the town manager, and police chief to speak on these topics and, and uh, make appropriate comments in response to uh, questions, I believe. So, again, I'd urge you to attend the event on the third. John, that's going to be at the Performing Arts Center. At the Performing Arts Center. And the time is 7, seven to 9 p.m. Um, 
Thank you, Jeff. Um, in our agenda tonight at 8 o'clock, we had um, posted a, a hearing for the Board of Health um, Associate. Um, we were notified earlier this afternoon that um, the notice to the Board of Health um, member was never delivered, whether due to uh, an issue in the post office or due to addressing or due to some other for unforeseen circumstance. I I'm not entirely clear. But the statutory requirement to notify was never made. Even though a phone call was made by the town and discussions occurred between all parties, the no it's not a question of the knowledge having not gotten through. It's a question of the statutory obligation to receive a notice in the mail. Um, that was not achieved. The letter was returned to us undelivered this afternoon, I believe. So uh, with that. Mr. Chair, I came home from the vacation. For this hearing tonight at 8 o'clock. Nancy, I'm sorry, I didn't recognize you. Nancy, I didn't recognize you. I'm sorry. Can, may I get my when I'm done my statement? Yes, absolutely. Under the circumstances, uh, having been contacted by council regarding the aforementioned failure to notice, we see no other alternative but to postpone the hearing until October 10th, which will be our next regularly scheduled meeting, 14 days hence. Uh, we, I don't like to do this, and I, I didn't. In, we weighed, I weighed, the prospects of continuing, but the statutory obligation and the potential ramifications from not having met it are, to, are a little ambiguous. So uh, thinking conservatism was the better path, we've decided to simply continue it. I would love to continue it tonight, but I don't see a way to do it with, without risk. But just a quick point on that. Is that the required 20 days? I believe it's five days notice for a re-notice and re-notification. Or re -notice. But okay. the individual was never noticed, period, full stop. Okay. Even though the knowledge has been transferred, the right. formal mailed notification was never. So do we need to get the 20 days in? It's not 20 days, it's five days. We confirmed earlier today. With Greg? Yes. Okay. I'm sorry, Nancy, question. Nancy, doctor, 371 Pearl Street. I was notified as I was leaving to come to this meeting by my attorney that supposedly the letter that was mailed was returned to town all today. I've yet to see the letter. I've yet to see the causes. It was just handed to me now by the town clerk in terms of the causes. I would like to do this proper. I do want to have this extended. And may I read what the causes are that you have listed tonight? It's probably not, it's probably out of order um, since we're not having the hearing. Yeah. I, my suggestion is, since this is all going to be redone on the 10th, that um, it probably is a better, it's better served to do it then. The, the letter's public record, I believe. Yeah. So. It wasn't published in the paper. This uh, is the first time tonight I have seen this letter and the cause. I believe that's because the letter was never delivered for the reasons I described earlier. That's exactly why we're postponing, because you never received it. That, that would be unfair. And uh, although all of us might say that we knew, I, I still think we need to meet the statutory obligation, not just the ethical obligation. So. I, I have a quick question. I'm hey, confused. Hang on, Andy. Hang on, Andy. Um, the, the, Andy. The, hang on. Nancy's question about the reason. Andy. Yeah, I just need that. I need I'm to sorry, go Andy. off of Nancy's I'm point. I'm sorry, Andy. You don't Are have they the different from the motion. Andy, here? you don't have the floor. I'm sorry. Nancy was still talking. Go ahead, Nancy. Oh, I'm sorry, Nancy. I'm done. Okay. I would like to do this proper, and I want this extended. We do too. Thank you very much. Any, any other? No, Andy. Go ahead, please. I, yeah, Thank I, you. I just uh, I'm confused. The the there they listed they cited two reasons in the last motion uh, from the last two meetings or last meeting. Well, technically two meetings ago. Are are they different from the motion in here in the letter that was sent to Nancy? Aren't they just a repeat sure. of these? Bob, um, town council said they're identical. Oh. But nonetheless, I understand. The obligation I understand. Was not met. Just thought right. I was yep. was missing something. No. Okay. With that, I'll open up for uh, liaison reports. John, um, I'm sorry. I think you really need to vote to continue the hearing. Thank you. you. Thank want. you, Bob. I'm sorry. Can we even open the hearing legally? You have to. It was posted. Well, I guess you can not continue before it at eight o'clock. I think you should get a sense of the board because you don't want to speak to the board. And Thank you. Thank you. Well, we can't do that till so You till can't open anyway. the hearing until late, and you right. can't therefore continue it until just after right, eight. But, but you can, can certainly, certainly get a sense the board. of the board. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'll open the floor for discussion. Andrew? I just want to make sure that 
the letter does get delivered. Um, I guess you have it in your hand now. Is, is that is, is that a formal? No, uh, we'll still mail it. Okay. We'll just make sure that we get the right address and we do this properly. Right. I apologize that that didn't happen. Yeah, as do I. I, I it's not clear to me what happened, but these things happen, which is why we check. Dan? Yeah. Comments? Uh, what can I say? <laughs> Are you in favor of the continuance? Yes. Okay. Yes. I assume you are as well, Barry. Yes. Are you in favor as well, Andrew? Thanks. Yeah, I, I don't see how you could do anything other than that. Okay. My only concern, I'm glad you covered it, is that there's not 20 days between now and the 14th. Um, and the fact that um, Nancy has never received this letter till tonight and has never received it in proper form through the mail, it leads me to ask the question, you know, whether or not, I mean, we can certainly continue it at the appropriate time tonight. You really can't open a hearing until it's right. 8 o'clock. But 20 days will not have passed. John, if I might. Bob. Um, I, I mean, I know what Ray said just a few minutes ago, but he'll also be here around 8 o'clock or just before for an agenda item. Um, he could certainly give you guidance if it's any different, different. than what we're discussing yeah. now. We'll certainly yeah. let Nancy know. And, and Nancy, I had planned to step out and contact um, your attorney. Do you want me to do that now no. or later, or are you will take care of that? Okay, thank you. And just to be clear, the town itself did not know that this failure to deliver had occurred until I got a call at uh, around 2 o'clock. And I got a notice yeah. around 1 o'clock. But we just found out when we sat down. Well, I just right. we just confirmed yeah. it because I'd had this, I'd seen it or talked about it in greater detail at 6.30. So um, anyway, apologies for the failure to, uh, to deliver. Um, so we'll take this up at 8 o'clock formally, but we have a sense of the board. Mm -hmm. With that, I'll open the floor for liaison report, Andrew. Um, not much going on. The the only thing is the uh, climate advisory committee has a uh, proposed bylaw that's in in our packet, um, and we'll be going over that later. So I'll hold on to it. Sorry. Um, I just want to make sure everybody writes down October fourth on their calendars. Um, we, we actually are going to sponsor. Um, an economic we're going to have an economic development uh, forum here in Reading. Um, we're really, really pleased to have Jay Ash, the economic development secretary, and a friend of Reading, um, come. As well as we've invited people from the development community. We've invited um, people from the brokerage community to have a real discussion about sort of the opportunities um, of economic development in Reading. Um, we've gotten some really good numbers, which will come out about sort of new growth. We're heading in the right direction. Um, we've always talked about the need to expand the pie in terms of our tax base. We're moving in the right direction. Andrew Corona will be giving some updates, who's our economic development person, and it's a really, really exciting time. Um, we've worked really, really hard to have investors um, actually stop in Reading as opposed to keep driving 28 to neighboring communities. So I'm really excited about that and the opportunities that that could provide. And um, I just want to make sure everybody knows about that and plans on at least if not attending. Where? I'm sorry? What time and where? It's at the library and I believe it's at 7. 6 o'clock. 6. Oh, six. All right. It's earlier. Yep. 6 o'clock. Food at 6 o'clock. Food, Food at 6. <laughs> yes. So um, I, I uh, just wanted to pass that along. Make okay. sure everybody knows about it. Thank you, Barry. Good catch. <laughs> Yeah. He is on report. Sure. Uh, just a reminder to the board that town manager review inputs for uh, FY18, actually for FY17, are due uh, to me by Friday the 29th. So far, I've received one. So you other three know who you are. Please uh, get them on to me if you can. So. Any extensions, Professor? Any extensions. Uh, Will be granted uh, the sole discretion of me, and, <laughs> and for just cause only. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, well, we do want them in the packet in time for ten ten. I right. assume we're still. We gonna may have, want to delay that. We might, on, well, so we'll get them in. Is full. <laughs> just get them we'll in. Figure <laughs> whole schedule. Please. Okay, uh, Bob. A reminder that, uh, and I didn't see this on any of our future agendas. The board of selectmen, I think, is required to hold a hearing on the cable franchise renewal. Okay. Uh, we need to schedule that sometime in October or November time frame. Uh, also, I just wanted to comment briefly on uh, the Board of Health. Uh, the new, newly constituted Board of Health met for the first time on September 6th, uh, the membership being uh, Chairman John Costigan, uh, Heidi Pfeiffer, and Kevin Sexton. At that meeting, uh, 
the vote was 3-0 to appoint Laura Vlasic as the health, uh, the health agent, uh, the delegation of the authority to her by the Board of Health. So I'm pleased to report that that did happen. Uh, the Board of Health appears to be functioning very smoothly. The two new members bring a complimentary set of uh, uh, experience. Heidi's a nurse, Kevin's a former selectman, and uh, they've already taken up some meaty discussions uh, in, ter in terms of pesticide regulations that they want to forward on to the, uh, the Board. Uh, I hear some joke, some joking laughter out there, but experience on that board in the government uh, sector, I think, is important to understand how the town works, how reporting responsibilities are exercised, and where staff reports to and where staff does not report to. And I think that may have been somewhat lacking with the previous membership. Um, that's all I have. Pat? I'm just back from, you know, out-of-state travel, so... Uh, my summer vacation is now over. Uh, my September summer vacation. I have nothing to report. Um, for myself, I attended the Reading School Committee's regular scheduled meeting last evening. Uh, discussion was uh, regards uh, some uh, findings as it relates to the CPAC program. Um, it was well covered on RCTV and uh, was well attended. So, uh, with that, um, I'll open for public comment. John, a question on uh, liaison reports. Any um, a is HRAC involved in the October third event? You're the liaison for HRAC. I believe nominally they've been asked to participate in any f any fashion they're comfortable doing it, and I believe um, former members of HRAC are engaged as well. And Dan, the, could you repeat yes. the last comment about the Board of Health? What was lacking? I think a clear understanding of uh, the fact that. Staff such as the health agent, the nurse, report up the chain under Bob, and they uh, they are administered uh, and, and manage as personnel under Bob. They do not report report in that sense to the Board of Health. They do issue reports to the Board of Health, and the Board of Health should coordinate certainly with that management chain. And I think there was some fuzzy understanding of that in the past. Uh, uh, I would I would. I was on the board. I, I, yeah. I didn't find that to be the case. Well, the, the, we nurse, the nurse thought she reported to the Board of Health. That was just not correct. She, I, they didn't think, the nurse did not think she reported to the health agent. That's that's all I'm going to say. Okay. Anything else, Andy? Nope. Right. Uh, public comment. Mr. Brown. Thank you, John. Bill Brown. Tonight, as a member of the uh, Cemetery Board of Trustees, just to let you people and the public in general to know that our next meeting, uh, next, I think it's a fifth the same night, we're going to be re reviewing our rules and regulations in regard to uh, specifically decorations. Uh, presently, we do not have any, and over the last, uh, this precipitated was last year when I was helping Frankie put out the veterans markers at Charles Lawn. There was a whole, there was a glass space full of marbles, glass marbles, and if they hit by a lawn well, that's dangerous. Mm -hmm. So we're going to sit down and look at our regulation and see what you can and cannot put on the thing. Anybody has any suggestions? Please contact us, mail us, come down and see us. You mean decorations the public can use? Not, yeah. Not that yeah. the town will use. No, no. Huh? Um, Bill, if you need any assistance finding out what peers do, I know that's a hot issue in Melrose and a couple yeah. of other towns. Well, we, we're, we're very fortunate. Our chairman uh, used to be associated with Forest, uh, Glen, Forest Hill Cemetery. <coughs> She's a very knowledgeable person on it. So, uh, it, yeah, we will contact. We may, uh, of course, I think we're going to have to have a public hearing. At that time, we run it by town council. Okay. But, okay. Uh, I'm speaking on behalf. And, and the other thing, uh, Thursday at 1.30 in the afternoon at 294 Charles Street. Um, if you remember, the gentleman that was on the common for Veterans Day, he was a bad tan death mark survivor. Yes. Yes. Kevin, oh, Kevin yeah. Baumiller mm -hmm. has been able to get him promoted to sergeant, so he's going to oh. give him that. Excellent. Uh, did he get back pay? <laughs> I think he did. <laughs> and a funny one about it, as being a uh, about 10 death match to buy I guess when he came back, he had a lot of money. He wanted to buy a new car. And of course, you know, they were rational. Uh, so he called up uh, a friend of his, uh, Wayne, General Wayne Wayne, and he got his car. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Without waiting. For the yes, comment. Sorry, Carl. 
Um, real quick, Carl McBath, Greg from Wakefield Street, um, with SNL football. Every year I usually come in front of you, and this year I just wanted to invite all of you. Um, this Saturday is going to be actually Mission of Deeds Night with SNL. This year we have a little over 850 kids, which is a record number for us. Mm -hmm. And we're asking all the um, kids to bring something to help people because rumor is, going to have a tough winter, a lot of snow and cold, and so we're asking people to bring, I know about snow budget. Um, My shoveling. <laughs> bring a, a pillow, uh, a blanket. Uh, the largest event before Mission Deeds had done was 400 uh, articles given to them, and we're shooting for 850 uh, this Saturday night. We're also, uh, we're fortunate enough, um, Jimmy Murphy, who, who's with us, was a quarterback for the Patriots, and he happens to know the present quarterback for the Patriots, so Tom Brady has donated uh, some of my autograph stuff at Gronk House, and so we're going to be able to raffle some stuff that will be going to the Michigan State. Wow. So, so, yeah, so except we'll this say, Saturday, Carl? Yeah. Tom Brady was coming? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. Not, not validate that rumor. But, uh, uh, regardless, it's uh, you know a lot of things going on in the town with people talk, talk about the vision, but this event on Saturday night has been warmly received by all the members of, of, of the community, like and the parents, and they're pretty like excited. That. So, as a town, we do have some issues, but when it's all said and done, we all we do band together and be able to do that. So, hopefully, anyone is able to attend. Um, I know our CTV ratings are going to be pretty high, so we're going to hopefully be able to uh, have a record number down there. Typically, we have around 4,000 people down there, anyways. Uh, this year, we have a sausage. And they're fried dough vendor, so you can have dinner down there too. And have one mission of beets. So. And just to be clear, you're not talking about food items. You're talking about <coughs> stuff for the home. Durable goods. Durable oh no, 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 no. Yeah. Well, we're going to do the food pantry and, and the, no, no uh, electronics. This is purely um, furniture okay. type of. Is there a list somewhere that folks can? can we're going to have that, and it's actually been blasted out to the okay. community and um, and Jenna, uh, the recreation department. So Jenna has it. Right? It's okay. been tremendous um, with all their work, but. We just went, this is a town program, so we wanted to make sure that everyone was in the loop on. Eight, eight hundred and fifty kids, and what was it last year? Six hundred something. Uh, Seven twenty-five. That's amazing. <laughs> There's no kids left at some point. You yeah, have them, all. <laughs> which is fine. It's really more of a community. It's become a community event there. We hope every year that um, town day gets rained out because the deal is the fireworks go off on our opening night. So, <laughs> you know, we're trying to work maybe that next year. But, That's uh, fantastic. Yeah, so it's been a great community event. And again, we're trying to do something back for the, for the community to help people that are going to need it this winter. Thank and, you. And, and Kyle's the biggest kid. <laughs> this is true. Uh, but again, thank you for your time. Thank you. Nancy. Uh, Nancy Doctor, 371 Hill Street. Um, Caitlin Russo. Uh, uh, Demetra Restuccio, uh, Lori um, Hoden, Beth Sherlin, Therese uh, Tedesco, and Linda Snow Doctor. These are women who have actually all resigned from boards and committees, um, and I'm concerned that clearly there's a pattern that needs to be investigated. And I'm suggesting that it should be done by an outside agency because I'm concerned that it should not be an internal group. Then there are, there are qualified women who have applied for volunteer board positions and were denied interviews. My June schedule, actually, for my appointment to the Board of Health was canceled. I'd like to know the rationale for that. I'm sorry, say that last sentence again, please. I'd like to know the rationale for my June scheduled appointment for a full Board of Health member. As an, as an incumbent member who was an associate, you wouldn't have to be interviewed. We don't always interview associates who are going up to full steps. I was given a schedule and an appointment. I think the first time we generally canceled everybody for that. And what was the rationale for canceling my Because of all the churn on the Board of Health, we wanted to wait till things settled out. What, what exactly has that to do with my appointment? Nothing to do with you specifically. Could you give yeah. me a rationale for that, though? We postponed the interviews because we thought it in the best interest of the town and because of what was going on we wanted things to settle out we wanted to observe the situation be, be more and specific. see, and see who, who the best candidates to fill that spot might be can you be more specific what are you referring to nothing i you just gave I, I was sure very specific up. could you be specific about what you your words were things were churned up could you be specific what you're referring you know exactly to? what i'm talking about I, i'd like to hear it from a transparent it, it was all the 
the drama surrounding the health agent. And I will use that term, the drama surrounding the health agent. I, I attempted to intervene in that and to get it fixed by the board. I was observing the board members to see what they were going to do to resolve that issue. It did not get resolved in a timely way. That's where we're having the hearing. You attended each and every one of those health I did. Oh, did. I did. If I could suggest this line of questioning is really out of line. You have a it hearing. Is. This, this information should all be dealt with in that hearing. And then perhaps another qualified um, appointee might want to also speak. Um, I'm Emmy Dove, 160 Charles Street. Um, I assume you've all seen my CV. I applied for the Board of Health position. And Sterling. And available. We, we both agreed. Yeah. But, but you, you couldn't make the interviews. That was the problem. I could not make the interview. I knew you were going to say yeah. that. Um, I received a uh, notification of the interview um, with one business day notice. Oh. One business day's notice that disproportionately impacts caretakers. I responded immediately and said I could not make that time because my husband was going to be out of town for the week. And could there be an alternate time? I never received a response. Never. Um, I just think that's ridiculous. I don't understand why you can't provide more notice on these things. You know, I knew about this meeting. I'm here. It's just fine. Um, Bob, do we know it factually? This, as we sit here today, um, this was provided. If you wait to go look at it. You look at the last page of tonight's handout. I'm just trying to read what it says. Um, This is uh, where you replied you couldn't make the day uh, for the reason cited. Yeah. And that September would be tough. Um, Tuesday evenings in particular are bad, but uh, you know the implication drawn was October might be better. And right. September was bad. But you could have sent me a response. Um, there, there was a follow-up. Whether you were interested there was in being a follow-up on Wednesday, this past Wednesday. Oh, I don't. I don't know when it was. I just know there was a follow-up. Yeah, whether it was you three weeks later. Would have been for the fifth. We, we yeah, had on the, the fifth. The, the fifth. The was, volunteer appointment. Was, was, yes, that was when the interview was given. Uh, Amy, let me just say, we always, we take the pool of candidates we have in front of us. I realize yeah, that. And from what I saw in your resume, you're an excellent candidate. And I hope you're going to keep it in there because we may have more openings. I really there's an we'll associate, you know, yeah. you know there's, there's always associate opening. positions yeah. that open. Um, um, I mean, you sort of... It, Here's the thing. You, you kind of made it out as if it was an emergency, like you had to do it that one day. Yeah, absolutely. Kind of. You guys Mr. made it Chairman, an emergency yes. yourselves. Very. So, I mean, it's nice to meet you finally. <laughs> you face with that great resume. Right. So, um, and, and thank you for, for applying. So, um, Dan Ensbring and myself make up the volunteer appointment subcommittee. Um, we actually read every resume for every person appointed for every position in town. Um, and then we make a, the process is we make a recommendation to the board of selectmen who either accepts it or changes it. Um, so we, we read every resume. Um, and right now we have close, well over 200 volunteers serving in various capacities, boards, commissions, committees. Um, for the position that, that you applied for, we received four applications. Um, one obviously for yourself. Um, one from Mrs. Doctor, who was applying to actually become a full member. Uh, we got one from Heidi Pfeiffer, who was a registered nurse, and also from former selectman Kevin Sexton. Um, I was actually quite disappointed that you, you couldn't make it, and obviously things happen, and we got to do a better job of getting stuff out to people. A lot of the stuff is done on the fly. We're volunteers, too. So um, at the time, um, we interviewed the two people that were there, we interviewed Heidi and we interviewed Kevin Sexton. Um, and it was uh, both Dan and I unanimously recommended that we appoint um, Kevin Sexton to the, actually at that time, the one position that was open. And the rationale was it was in, a, in our view um, as selectmen, um, uh, an important appointment to make because in our judgment, the most important thing was to make sure that we had a compliment, a full compliment on the Board of Health so that we could make what we thought, <coughs> and I still believe, a critical appointment to um, uh, the health agent. So 
not interviewing you was not because we didn't think that um, you weren't a qualified candidate. Um, you wanted to fill the spot. We wanted to fill the spot. So fast, I, I just actually, I know there's a lot of people that were here, I read the social media, and I just want to get the fact pattern out so that everybody, and not to cut you off, I, I really don't mean to cut you off. Um, we got to the Board of Selectmen meeting, and before we actually had a chance to actually appoint anybody, Beth Sherwin resigned. I, I get all of that, but you, as Nancy had said, I actually received notice of an interview scheduled for June. You did nothing between June and September. Why did you not do anything in that time? It doesn't make any sense to me. You needed somebody else on the board. Why didn't you do anything? Why did you wait? And then all of a sudden it was, okay, it has to be done one in one night. I don't, I don't get that. Uh, so, um, I'll leave the first part of your question. Um, but the second part of the question was very important. Um, they finally had to act when they acted as a board because of the Fall Street Fair. We had 15,000 people coming into town and they appointed at the last possible instant ahead of that the Board of Health that could then meet and appoint a health agent. Um, in my view, that was an enormous risk to have 15,000 people without a health agent relying on the Board of Health to make any necessary uh, calls that day. It turned out there was a very necessary one. There was a very unsafe food vendor that did need to be sent packing, and I was very glad we had the health agent. It was an unusual set of circumstances, but there was an urgent reason to act on that day. That okay, well, all of this that I, I, you know, I would have probably let all of this go had you appointed someone who I believe was a qualified candidate, but you didn't. You had in your pool, you had somebody who was much more qualified. I, for the record, so people know, I've been a researcher at the Harvard Medical School, the CDC, and the Harvard School of Public Health, and I've published in multiple journals. And you guys, Appointed a realtor and former selectman. Right. This, 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 no, 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 this is this is out of line. I'm sorry. I just Barry, I I do want to. So so your your, your your resume is sterling. I'll tell you why I voted to put Kevin on and why I voted to put him on uh, at, on the desk and why I put him on here. In my mind, it was an emergency situation that required um, an emergency appointment. Um, and, um, and and having Kevin um, step up, um, and, and what I'm hoping is a temporary role, so we can get the it's health agent, the health agent appointed, right? We, we've done that now, um, and that we now have a full complement on the board of health. But it, okay, it's a three-year term. You gave him the full member, not an associate member. Yeah, I mean, if, if I may, you've asked several questions. I'd like to make sure we get some of the others done. I think that the core thought is you've got a sterling resume. There's no question about the bona fides. The only issue is, one, there was no means to get you in front of the VAS. Two, there are openings in the form of associate memberships uh, for these committees. And there's an opportunity to, to um, participate if you're still interested. And I don't see any reason why the comments made earlier would still apply in a week or two or a month or two, or whatever you choose to do. Bob? I might, um, Emmy, you'll recall an email exchange from, I'm thinking it was May or June, where you were interested in some economic development ideas, and I put you in touch with Andy Corona. Um, I actually forwarded that exchange to both of the volunteer subcommittees with a strong recommendation that you look like the perfect candidate, and they agreed. So there's no dispute about that. It's really an issue of timing. And again, to my knowledge, the board has never appointed a candidate they didn't know personally who are interviewed. It was an emergency. But there's, there's, again, there's no dispute in your qualifications. You came as highly recommended you know, from all of us as is possible. It just didn't work out that night when it needed yeah, to work out. Yeah, I'll just then recommend that in the future, you probably try and give people a good week's notice on things so that people can. Yeah particularly young women because there is a lack of young women on these boards and commissions. Please, and please keep your calling card in because yeah, things yeah. change all please. the time. Please, please, please. Emmy, please. Emmy, I, I, yeah. have, I should apologize. Yeah. I, I feel a bit bad about this because um, I was, mm -hmm. one of the vacancies they filled in the Board of Health was mine and I knew that was vacant mm -hmm. since a April Oh, 6th. I applied in May. Yeah. So, so mm -hmm. I, I, but I, could have, I was aware of this, I should have pushed to get my vacancy filled. All right. 
Other comments? Yes. We'll move forward. Hi, Caitlin Mercurio, A Street. Um, I find this beyond disturbing that a subject matter expert who's worked for the CDC, Harvard School of Public Health, was passed up for an interview and a realtor was appointed. And I would like to know specifically who reviewed her application and who made the decision that it was appropriate to not even interview her to suggest a second time. This is alarming and women are leaving town government in droves. Um, that seems to be a narrative that is emerging here, and I... It sure is. Yeah. And it's, sure and it's is. false. Um, you've heard so who, I, my question specifically was, whose decision was it to not accommodate her? The, the answer's been provided already. There were a set of interviews. They were scheduled. And the BASC requires that candidates come before them. New candidates. New candidates. It's not always a requirement for renewals. And as we've heard earlier, that wasn't accomplished. There's no question about the resume. There's no question about the skill set. But my question was not answered. I want to know who saw her resume. I saw her resume. I saw her resume. It was amazing. But she wasn't so, interviewed. And we needed to make an appointment yeah. in an emergency situation, and we did that. Had Emmy been able to make that, I would have loved to have her be on. Okay? We needed to make an emergency. That's the judgment that we, that we brought to it. And That's unfortunate. Secondly, um, I noticed that on the 5th, yes, the 5th, um, the, the night that Beth Sherlin resigned, you appointed two members. When I looked at the Home Rule Charter, it says that you have to post a vacancy for 14 days, which should have given Emmy plenty of time to get in for an interview. All right, well, we ran that decision by both the town clerk who was sitting in the back. I went over to Laura and I said, is this resignation tonight? Or is it tomorrow, the first of business? She said it's effective immediately. I then went to our town council. I said, Ray, are we clear to make this appointment tonight? Ray, you, you recall that I came over and asked you that? I'm, I'm and Ray right. nodded his head, uh, and I went on that basis. Section 8.10, vacancies on boards or committees. Whenever a new board or committee is established or vacancy occurs on any existing board or committee, the appointing authority shall forthwith cause notice of the vacancy to be publicly available for not less than 15 days. We only had two candidates, remember, for that position that we but just... But there was only one position. But we had interviewed both, and we were even saying, it's a shame we can't put them both in. It's a shame we can't. And then suddenly, we have the opportunity. The most logical thing to do, therefore, is to appoint the people that you just interviewed, not... So that we like had an hour a full complement on the Board of Health. Which was essential going into, going into the reasons fall. that Bob said. Now, things can change. We're we very open. open. We're, I'm very open to this candidate. Okay, there's no war. Well, I, I would hope you are. She's the subject matter expert. Yeah. I mean, arguably, there's and no one running more qualified I than her. Wait to on her. Board. I cannot wait to interview her. Okay. So I will, I will look for the earliest opportunity to put every qualified candidate I can on future. But to, answer, but to answer your question straightforwardly, the clerk, town clerk, and town council both opined that an appointment yeah. was inappropriate and right. the board acted on that basis. And we had already had the hearing, we had already done the interviews, and we just felt the in our judgment right. that it was important to have a full complement. And in your judgment, it was appropriate to appoint a former selectman, All right. a realtor with no That's experience enough. over a subject matter That's expert. Wow. Most of our positions in town. Most of our when you're at the point where you're talking to constituents like this, it might be time to rethink your role. Yeah. Mm. Most, most, most Thank you. Well, most we're not supposed to get into personality Dan, Dan, excuse me. Okay. Please, let's just continue with the personal attacks. Yeah, that's not helpful. We can certainly disagree without being disagreeable. And as Bob said, there are plenty of things in this world today that we can disagree about. But when it comes time to 01867, I believe it ought to be one Reddick. The settlers of this town in 1620 came here and managed to live fairly harmoniously up until this point. With, and I don't see much that we can't talk through. We will always have disagreements, but there's no reason we can't be pleasant and respectful. To the matter of qualifications, most of our boards, committees, and commissions don't have a prerequisite for skill set. That's correct. We take all interested parties. I think the most important is interest and time. Many of the skills and lessons can be taught. 
and uh, I believe also in the evening in which the, um, I think it was September 5th, we had a query to Mr. Costigan, who's in the back of the room, regards whether the subject matter was appropriate for somebody not skilled in, as a sanitarian, might be able to take it up. And in the opinion of the chair, the answer was in the affirmative. So while I don't think there's any doubt that subject matter expertise is better, I don't think it's a prerequisite. I don't even think it's a, a necessarily a requirement. And on that basis, the candidate in question was approved. Um, I would do the same for anyone else in the room that had an interest in the subject matter. Um, and I, again, it's true for all of our boards, committees, and commissions. There, there isn't a prerequisite. There's no um, acid yes. test. Other comments from the public? Yes. Good evening. Um, Megan Young, 40 Oak Street. Um, just to follow up to the comment about September 5th and that there being an emergency about the Fall Street Fair and not having a health agent, do, do we not as a town have an uh, acting health agent at that time? We did. We were using the services of North Reading on a temporary okay. basis fully compliant with the law in terms of staffing. Okay. And, and, and just if I can add, add, sure. I can add that, that that gentleman stayed on longer than he planned on. So um, he wasn't available for the Fall Street Fair? I'm not sure. I don't know whether he was available for this. Like that was the for this fall. deal was right. the Fall Street Fair. But, but the Fall Street Fair, but also going forward. You know, oh, this, had been, this had been this had been lingering. So we had somebody who was hanging on. I, we begged him to stay. I uh, thank you so that. So it was important that we had the opportunity to appoint and get a full complement so that we could get the health agent appointed and move forward. So that, yeah, but that, if I that's, heard it yeah. correctly, it was that it, it had to be done on September 5th because there was impending September 6th that you had to appoint a health agent because you had a concern about the Fall Street Fair. Is that what you said, Bob? I just wanted to be clear. I never heard that. And that actually would have probably been nice to share with us just for information about your all's concern about the Fall Street. Just well, as a To that point, thought. to amplify Thank that you. point, the, this gentleman um, <clears throat> served in that capacity for the duration from the departure of the prior health agent. So we're talking about somebody who's, a, who's an employee, fully occupied in another town, who's finding enough time, along with with others in the in the, to make up the statutory requirement to cover Reading. Doing that after a month is probably okay. Two months, you're stretching it. We were going yep. into three. We were going into six. 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 Excuse me. Or seven. We've been covering since, uh, since February. Since February. February. Yeah. So the, the difficulty there is you can't depend on temporary resources because you're already stretching them. And at any point, there, there's no obligation. They don't have to serve. They're doing it out of the goodness of their heart. They're obviously being compensated, but they've got a, they've got a full assignment in the, some other town as well. If I might, John. Yes, Bob. Um, uh, Megan, we didn't know if he would be available, but when, when asked, he said, I can't promise that I will be. So it seemed like the prudent thing to do was okay. Um, you know, and your, your point's well received about notice, but sometimes in public safety and public health, too much notice causes the wrong reaction. So just keep that in mind that, well, why are you so concerned about this? What, are, what do you know that I don't know kind of thing? Yeah. And we had a new group taking over the Fall Street Fair, as you well know, and we didn't want to cause them any waves. So, thank you. Yeah. Me, Megan, to your, the, the point about the Fall Street Fair and the, and uh, this is a, actually, a, I guess, a legal question. Do, do you need a, a Board of Health uh, uh, appointed agent? I, I, we, we would, when I was on the Board of Health, we would have health inspectors that the town hired go to food vendors and make sure that they, they complied with food code. Um, and that's how public safety, or public health was, public, not public safety, public health was protected by, uh, I mean, the, the health inspectors. N n the health agent came into play when there were violations, they had to come before the board, and uh, we might have to take them to court, things like that. But the, the, uh, with the workhorse of, of protecting public health uh, in town as far as food vendors was, was done by food inspectors, health inspectors, was my understanding. So was there a need for a, an age, an, a board of health assigned agent? I'd like to answer that first. I'm not the lawyer, but. <laughs> either either one. Either, 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 um, 
whatever the technical answer is, and I, and I do respect it, mm. I was concerned if something happened and the town were to be litig litigated against, we needed to protect ourselves in the best way possible, and that's by having a full staff, if you will. So whatever the, we, first of all, we can't know. When we prepare for the Fall Street Fair for Public Safety, we discuss a lot of horrific things that of course we hope never happen. Mm. So we're just trained to think about what can go wrong and what should the town have done better in advance. So it's one of those abundance of caution things, not just the nuts and bolts sort of issues, that if something happened yeah. and we could not adequately point to the fact we were properly staffed, we have liability. But you were fully staffed. It was just the, not the, without a the health agent. The health agent health. is just a board no. of health appointee. It, I don't think it has anything to do with staffing, coverage, well, inspections, things that, like that. That's your opinion. <clears throat> the, no one else shares it. Okay. Um, no, for the board, the, the, the other question I had about legalities is if the if the position wasn't this the, the second position that was open on the board of health <coughs> that opened up when Beth resigned. Um, if if that goes against the charter, is it is that a legal appointment? In other words, should it just be Kevin that's appointed right now? Well, <laughs> on one hand, uh, so um, when we when the board acted, the um, which board? The board, okay. this board, this board act, which includes you all. You all. Yes, no, I am with you all. When the board acted, thank you. The uh, uh, the information that we had mm. was that the, there had been a uh, a posting of the position. Okay. Turns out, I saw the posting for the first time today, and that posting was for your position. Correct. Um, to expire on June thirtieth of 2017. So the posting that was made wasn't really relevant to either position. So the person that was, the, so Kevin was appointed to a new three-year term um, um, to expire in 2020. Um, Heidi was appointed to a new, to the remainder of a term to expire in 2018. The position that was posted expired in 2017. So we didn't appoint so, either one by so, the charter? So there was not complete compliance with the charter. Now, second part of this, though, is what to point to. The, the second part of it is, so what? What, does it, what happens if you don't follow it? So in the law, there, there, is, um, there is a, uh, a concept, when, especially that dealing with procedures, mm. that's called uh, being directory. That is, you're directed to do something this way, but if you don't do it, there is no legal consequence. Oh. Okay? So, the charter does not say... That's rather free. Yes. The charter does not say, and anybody who's, not, who's appointed in violation of this is not validly appointed. Many charters have a provision that says, uh, you know, no one shall be appointed who, on, until after the 15-day period has been has lapsed. Uh -huh. There is nothing like that. So if you don't follow the charter, there is no legal consequence. So where you stand today is you have two people who have who have been appointed. Mm. I said I uh, they have been sworn in. If you wanted to take the position that they were not um, uh, th that yeah. A mistake needs to be corrected. You would have to go through the process that you're very well familiar with, mm. give them notice, mm -hmm. give them a hearing, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. go through all of that in order to remove them. They have been validly appointed, and they have been validly sworn. No, I'm not suggesting that. I'm just asking about the legality of their appointment, and it sounds okay. like okay. so. Obviously, the better practice would be um, to follow the charter to the letter. I agree, <laughs> um, but it turns out there were couple of missteps along the way. One was mm -hmm. that what, the way the thing was posted referred to a position by the time expired. that right. had expired. Right. So, mm -hmm. so, um, so it, the de so defect like, what, what, applies what type of, type equally of error. Error. No, 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 the actual position expired on June 30th and then we should have... Andrew's probably, position expired. 
We should have issued a new uh, rec. Or that's a right, new but you, you vacated yeah. it in April. That's right. right. So yeah. when it was posted, it was perfectly good. Like yeah, we were yeah, looking yeah, for yeah. somebody who was... Nobody caught it. Right. Yeah. right. Yeah. So when we were talking about this, every, everyone assumed <coughs> I, had not, I had not seen the, the, the posting, but, but what we were assuming was that the posting was generic enough to, right. to uh, encompass it. The intention was to fill his slot. And it turns out it was um, not even generic enough to um, to fill my slot. Fill either slot. Generic was okay. Generic would have been fine. Okay. <laughs> Going forward, did you get um, that, Caitlin? It's uh, <laughs> luck. it's seven forty. So I'm going to allow one more question. Um, Heather. Hey, um, Heather McLean, Twenty Great Street. Um, I'm the chair of the Human Relations Advisory Committee. I'm disheartened by the recent resignations of my fellow committee members, um, both most recently this month and earlier this year. While I share most, if not all, of the concerns um, and issues that led to their resignations, the reason that I have not yet tendered my resignation is that I feel our town needs the presence of an organization tasked to look out for human rights and relations now more than ever. Um, the AJAC, of which I have been chair for about a year, is an advisory board to the Board of Selectmen created and governed by their own policies. However, as laid out in these policies, we're tasked to do to do much more than just advise, such as engage in outreach to groups um, who have been the object of discrimination, provide a safe place where individuals or groups may air their concerns or complaints as to the existence of discrimination, identify perceived problems of discrimination or human relations conflict within the town, and promote and encourage understanding, tolerance, and diversity, and the recognition of human rights and civil rights in the town and community, as well as sponsor educational programs and the celebrations of events for that purpose. In order to fulfill these responsibilities, we asked to co-sponsor the Reading Public Library's discussion of an author presentation of Waking Up White, which deals with white privilege. And we were told we could not because the board saw it as too political. When we asked if we could co-sponsor and support a com community vigil in response to the Orlando Pulse shooting over a year ago, we were met with initial uncertainty due to the perception that something of that nature might be too anti-gun and therefore too political. When we asked to promote an immigration workshop that's purpose was to demystify immigrants and the process of immigration in general, the topic itself was deemed too political. We've also been told multiple times that we should be keeping our focus on the local community. So local that we were not able to issue a press release regarding anti-Semitic graffiti that was found in a golf course in neighboring town over two years ago. Well, here we are. <laughs> Faced with the most local of problems, groups are now being threatened with discrimination and made to feel uncomfortable and unsafe in our own town. Our committee is looking forward to moving ahead with the event being planned on October 3rd in response to the anti-Semitic and racist graffiti found in Reddick Public Schools recently, and we hope to be enabled to move forward with such events both reactively and proactively as we've discussed in the future. I understand that the board feels strongly that we should remain an advisory committee, and I do not disagree that the advisory purpose of our committee is extremely important. It's because of this that we would have anticipated being called upon by the Board of Selectmen and the town during these important times in our community and asked for advice on how to move forward with the response and tasked with coordinating efforts on behalf of the town. Although this didn't happen, AJAC was asked by the clergy to join in their efforts and we voted in favor of committing delegates to the planning of what is happening, um, what is shaping up to be a wonderful community gathering. I believe that the best path forward for this town is to maintain and empower an organization like the AJAC to educate the community and to promote the understanding of diversity, and for the board to delegate these responsibilities to, com to the committee, which was originally created for that very purpose. I think it's the only way for this town to move forward if it wants to be viewed as an open and welcoming committee at all. Thank you. Okay, with that, um, Bob, Mr. Chair, can I, can I just comment on that, please? Um, thank you for that. Um, I've been attending a lot of the HRAC meetings, as you know, um, and favoring a role for HRAC that kind of, um, what's the best way to describe it? I think I might have said it, I mean, scrambled some eggs, right? Um, I want the advice of lots of people. I'm not that smart to be able to figure, I can know how to fill a pothole, I might know, really? um, I might know about sort of economic development, I don't know about this stuff as much as maybe I should. So as somebody who was elected by 25,000, represent 25,000 people, I want lots of people advising me on stuff that I just may not have the skill set to do. That was the role that I see for HRAC 
Um, it saddens me that, that members have resigned. Um, I, I hope that there's people to take its place. I also agree that there is a vigorous role for HRAC um, and that your job is to make people uncomfortable because these are uncomfortable times and there are lots of uncomfortable conversations that need to happen. Um, I don't know why you weren't allowed to do this or do that, but as long as I'm here as one of five, um, I'm going to push really hard that HRAC um, is a part of this town and advises us and has the freedom to kind of go outside of the box and really challenge people's conceptions, um, challenge people's thoughts, and more importantly, figure out a way to kind of bridge this side of the aisle and that side of the aisle. There's just too much negativity in this town. People have entrenched themselves, they've dug in, they're listening, they're not listening, and they're talking. Um, and it's just gotten to the point where we can't get anything done. Um, I don't know if it's a function of what's going on in Washington. Frankly, I don't care. I think we're better than what's going on there. Um, so there's a role for HRAC, um, and I'm going to continue um, to, and, and pray that there are more people that come to the fold um, and want to do this because the need, like you said, the need hasn't been greater. So I want to just congratulate you. Stick in. Um, hang in there. If there's other people out there that want to get involved, there is a role for it. We will figure out what that role is. Advising the selectmen, maybe it's something. I, I don't know what the role is. The need is there. So um, thank you again. Hang on, please. Uh, Heather, um, I'd, I'd second much of what Barry said. I, um, I'm anxious to dig in and find a way forward as well. Uh, my schedule has gotten in the way the last couple months, and I apologize. Um, HRAC has an important role to play. We don't have time to be everywhere, and you got and HRAC can be the eyes and ears in many cases of what's going on. Um, we've got to find a, made a, a way to make it work, and uh, one of the reasons I'm I'm part of the group is to help that move forward. I look forward to doing that in the coming months. Heather, uh, you Andy, said that you were Andy, told. Would you mind raising your finger just so you get recognized by the chair? Thank you. Um, Heather, you said that you were told not, the HRAC was told not to do A, B, C, D. Did the, I wasn't on the board at the time, did the Board of Selectmen vote to, or weigh in as a board? Uh, not, not an official um, vote for each offense as we, um, we have uh, kind of worked, I think about over a year ago, last time we presented the front of the board, we kind of come to a decision that the way we would, the way we would operate where we would keep them back to as well as mm -hmm. um, our liaison to the board, which was Kevin Sexton last year and is now Don Arena. So basically, whenever we want to do anything, essentially, we um, ask permission of those two, and Matt has the authority by the board to give us permission, just because as a try to make it more timely. Um, so that's the process, is basically I email those two people, and we are told yes or no. Well, um, Heather, there's only one issue that I, that I am very familiar with, with the list you had. Uh, I believe you were told this, but if you weren't, I apologize. The incident in Stoneham was still under police investigation when you wanted to issue a police report, and that's just not something we can do. We can't step in the way of their investigation. I just wanted to make sure you knew that. All right. Um, with that, I'm actually going to shut down the public comment. We're 60 minutes into what usually is a five-minute segment with a very full agenda. Um, thank you all for coming out. You're welcome to stay if you'd like. Um, your comments are always important. It's simply that we're probably here till 11.30 as it is. Um, I just have one quick thing for my report. Yes, Bob. Um, out of respect for our colleague who works for Mass DEP, I'm not going to go into this, but on page 48 of your packet tonight, we received a lengthy uh, correspondence from Mass DEP that uh, Town Council was involved with as was our water department. And I want to make sure that uh, that you read it, and I don't want to put Andy in any other kind of jeopardy. You, you can discuss it. It's, no. it's, I checked with okay. extensively with the ethics. You don't have to leave the room. <laughs> I don't have to leave the room. I just cannot call the state on our behalf. That's okay. all. Okay. Um, you know, feel free to ask council any questions. But it was um, mm -hmm. it was a result of a lot of good work uh, by our water department and uh, mm -hmm. many other communities' water departments to get the result we got. And it's uh, frankly, among many other things, a short-term savings for ratepayers. 
I just wanted to make sure the board. All right, thank you. It's on page 48. Yes. Yes. Okay. Right. And the rest of the board, if you have comments, please ask. Clear. Get the chair, please. We'll take one minute here just to clear the room. Uh, just mm -hmm. Bob, uh, I've been getting some questions yes. about when. <laughs> I had my hand up. Uh, about when we will uh, discuss the override survey and you wanted to speak about the process for because there are people wondering what I, the I data is I yeah. really need to ask you that question I, I don't have an answer other than uh, I think Matt's still here we've discussed it internally along with Jane Miller yeah and have some preliminary cuts of the data um, it seems and, and again at, at breakfast this morning and I, I had another meeting with Dr. Doherty later in the day it seems to us of those that I just mentioned that this really belongs in a board of selectmen's meeting not in the financial forum okay. so that's one question for you guys to think about because your next meeting as a board is the financial forum i think <coughs> the 10th um, uh, and then the forum well, maybe not the no we have the 10th should meet just before one day before right? yeah monday and then we meet Tuesday. but it seems like the board it's your survey it's your questions it seems like you need first crack at it at a minimum a lot of reading there that was only one question that you got yeah. just to be clear I, I do want to clarify do we bob do we i'm sorry harry um <laughs> <laughs> yes <laughs> um are are we or <clears throat> staff somebody um actually going through them to sort of cross tab and get a little bit more granular in terms of who said what and why and just sort of what type of comments are coming from what demographics so that we can kind of learn a little bit more than just you know Right. We all stink, <laughs> you know. Right. Right. Um, Matt, do you want to add anything? You can cut the data any way you want. So we're just waiting for you to tell us which way you'd like to see things. Oh, right. Most of the data, most of the data is attribute data. You picked one of four or five yeah. choices, right? Right. So my suggestion is you cut it by the very first question: right. did vote, didn't vote, or voted yes, voted no, didn't vote, and then within those groups, just show the proportion or mm -hmm. the number of. Ye you, yes to A, yes to B, yes to yep. C. And then the comments, just do them as raw form. Maybe you do a, a pie chart in each question to show the percentages within the attribute data so people get a sense. That's yeah, all. That's easy. I, but, uh, John. I think the comments, we need to be sure oh, that those, those comments are The raw comments have to go. Really right. valuable. No, they are. And, and, um, uh, although it's interesting, what would be more interesting is sort of seeing and i know you can't you can you can cross tab yes no a b c it's hard to sort of like <coughs> cross tab a, a comment because you know is it is it maybe, maybe a subject a material, i started but to do it but is it, it's it, and maybe there's a maybe there's pat i mean it won't be 100 percent accurate but maybe there are patterns that emerge people yeah. who voted no who don't have kids in the schools thought the biggest issue was that may be you know so i i should have put it be accurate, i started a Excel spreadsheet in subject material with a pivot table so that you could pick that up right. and drop it into the pivot table so as you look at subject material then you can right. you know now once you get it but it's very subjective I mean it's get that, how that. I'm looking at it <laughs> not how it's not like yeah. A, B, C, or the D. The comments kind of fell into about six, seven, eight right. sort of yeah. broad buckets. And that, that's really all you, you know, can tell. Well, you know, some of them were multiple right. buckets. Some of them right. were. Yeah. John, how did you yeah. uh, get? Sorry, the um, uh, PDF comments into a spreadsheet to tabulate. So there's a there's a PDF program that so allow you to tracker. you know. Yeah. Yeah, extract, extract, the, the, as extract. Yeah, yeah, and so Anything that's what I'm on TV or convert it to a doc X. We're file. just talking generalities, yeah, okay. right? So you create, and you I did, did that, and you bummed it in, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then you did, and then you you're amazing floated me. into it, that's, just that's cut and paste it into Excel, yeah, and do right, convert right. text to columns, and it's done. Yeah, I mean, and and that's pretty easy to, to do. And I think you can group them by if you really want. I mean, there are a lot of comments. It's completely subjective, as John says. But if you don't worry about the absolute values, but just look at this is higher than that, or this was the top three popular choices, those are relevant. <coughs> it yes. doesn't matter how many because you're subjectively assessing them. Right. But like one of the most of the question thirteen, one of them, I I did this in a table form. Number two in importance was you don't get enough communication, and so the tell for us is. We can't afford to um, avoid, we, we, we must take every opportunity to communicate. No matter what we did in the prior override, we didn't, we were right. identified as not having communicated enough. Right. Maybe we chose badly and chose public um, meetings. Maybe and that was across the board in all three categories. Yeah. That the particular subject. Right. 
despite the fact that we had 15 or 16 meetings for you know, for question six well the, the question that we got most 13. recently uh, yeah I, I yeah. don't remember the number of yeah. the question but there was yeses and there were no's right and there were I didn't vote and there was all these comments and you know and it, when you look inside that universe of comments that was a recurring theme that they didn't fit that the people who responded right didn't feel communicated with. right and, right. I, and that's something we're going to have to address because we had this we had a road show going on extensively for months yeah um, and that uh, at least among the people that were surveyed in all three categories that was a recurring theme so we're going to need to yeah I think we're going to need to think about a, a different approach because that approach despite the fact that it seemed like it was one that would you know give a lot of information out and, and I do want to just make sure I, I make this very clear. Um, the board was given public comments on one question. There are many other questions which there were comments made. So I know there was some concern in the community that my comment was, was deleted or not shared. Um, if that's true, that it wasn't shared, it's because you answered a comment to a different question, not only question 13, which is all the board has seen. Right. That was given to you, if you will, as homework start reading all this stuff and then we're going to get a next big packet at some point so I'm, I'm glad you brought that up yeah i think what it does is it gave us a sampling so we can start to think about how to categorize it and everybody's going to do it in their own way i guess mm -hmm. you know. but yeah i i would i mean somebody else does, cat wants to categorize it uh, i'll i'll cheat off of their homework <laughs> and uh so for example i did here's here's the yes votes on question 13. This is entirely my assessment. You just cut it into Excel. You put a bunch of vertical tabs. You yeah. just read through them all. There's multiple choices in some cases because two themes were identified. And it's completely manual and it's subjective. But if you didn't agree with it, you just put an X in here or delete an X to get your version. And what was interesting to me, and I'm sorry this is an eye chart, but forgetting number one, number two was this communication thought. It was about the override finance status. It was about the operation of town. Mm -hmm. And to me, I, I don't care whether this is this high, this high, or this high. Mm -hmm. The point is it's number three, and it's still relevant at that level. Of course, we want the gross data as well, the raw data. But if you roll it up at this level, you get kind of 10 buckets of interesting commentary that we ought to do. Unfortunately, it's all manual. It took about two hours to do this one. This so. one question. So I, you know, if I get another plane ride, maybe but I'll that's, I did that's this on the good, plane though. to Mexico. I mean, that's, so. that's a good way to That's actually it. simpler than the way I'm doing it. It's actually probably more efficient. So, all right, enough said. Questions? Yes. Uh, George Captain 66, Colvin Road. Um, could that be put somewhere so we can see it, if I can not read it here? Um, that, yeah, Processing. absolutely, but that's my personal opinion, and I would I'd almost rather the board do is collectively, because it's subjective. What did the read, What did the author mean when he said this? Mm -hmm. What themes are in it? So I, you know, if it had a sentence on the topic, that's a, that's a clear one. Yeah, that's an X, if they talked about communication. If they said, I, I didn't understand, maybe it is, but that's the subjectivity. And if they said five things, you'd put five Xs. But I don't have an objection to it, but I don't know how to do it with any sense of accuracy. It's my opinion. I, I, I have an idea, actually, on that. And and so we don't break open meeting law, because clearly Especially it's a Especially not now. <laughs> <It's>, yeah, <laughs> right. right. Um, it, it is that it is a deliberative process. But we could be assigned that spreadsheet with the understanding that it's deliberative, not to be shared with the public until, you know, because mm -hmm. public records that are deliberative uh, you don't have to share it. You're not supposed to share with the public until the deliberation is over. Well, you've just put it up on the. It's list. already public. That's, so that's public. That's public. No, the, the raw data was public weeks ago. Yeah, right. But his how he he was saying this, this is nothing but my opinion. No, he yeah. just put it on. Right. But he just put it up. So, yeah. Anything that he that it was Instagram. It's so I can ask for that. Snapchat. He just put it up it? in a public meeting. It is now a public record. <laughs> right. Okay. And it is a public record of his individual opinion. Okay. Right. But it's a public record. So, okay. so that being so said, that being said, um, he he should, should make it, it available to Bob so that Bob can can okay. make it available to anybody. Right. So so I, I re retract those words. But the other words that I wanted to say is, couldn't we all then uh, n not communicate to each other because it would break open media law? But for the next meeting. Um, see how John seems to have categorized them nicely in groups 
and it'd be a good way to start a discussion. It may be. You might disagree. So, for example, on the screen I have my groupings, which I developed as I went through the list, yeah. because you might have a nice tight definition, yeah. and then you say, well, this is close, and I can combine these by changing a few words, so the well, I, categories I, I, I grow, mean, I don't but know. it's I completely mean, subjective. For example, of course, I, of course, but it's, it's got to have a disclaimer know. in it, you know, right? Because I mean, what happens is when it goes up there, mm. it, becomes it becomes gospel. Vital. Correct. Yeah, I don't want people it, to review it, this yeah. other than it's one way to look at the data. Look at the raw data and form your own opinion. It's the only way to, you can okay. say. All Sorry, right. you need to put it, make a disclaimer. But, but as far as can the rest of you now take what he's done and right. use that as the baseline for for thinking about that, absolutely, he's, he's made it a public record, so you're yeah. it's available okay. to you. I, I will commit to do the rest of question 13, but I won't do the rest of the 12 questions. <laughs> <laughs> well, we also have Bob's review to get done yeah. before yeah. the next uh, meeting. Yes, yes. please. Absolutely. Right. That's, I mean, that's you know, we've got to take this in sequential order. Yes. Agreed. That's due Friday. So, uh, so basically then we're not really going to talk much about it on the financial forum mm -hmm. then? Is that, or we won't be ready for that? Or I just want to let so. people... I don't the think expectations of when we can actually have this out. Talk All the it. comments are public. Of that of question. That one question. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, and I hope that we don't release the rest of it without it going through this yeah. um, sort of process. The other, of process. Yep. So, the other um, question is just do you want to release all 12 at once or is that too much to process? Would you rather do it as say mm. three or four questions a week one, three or four questions a week? For no other reason than it's in bite-sized pieces. If you get all of this, you're never going to go through it all. Um, um, we've wrestled with that internally and if the board would, if you would appoint one or two people to work with staff to ask that, answer that question on your behalf, that would be very helpful. Although we do it personally or whether we do it you know, electronically, it makes no difference. But I'm talking about the how you break it up. Do you throw all 12 out? And that's, I can't answer that until we have a discussion about, I mean, we have a lot of analysis that you're going to enjoy and understand and it tells you a story. Right. The question is then, what's the best way? It's back to communication. What's the best way to communicate this exactly. to the general public? Um, and if you just release raw data, even well organized, I'm not sure that the comments get the most benefit. Whereas I know Barry's thinking is, I want to understand who what type of person made this comment, if you will? You know, what, what is their demographic? What is their background? Or if there's a their pattern. Opinions? Exactly. Great. So I really, I think that uh, Matt and I and, and Jane would benefit from one or two select. Would you are you suggesting release it as a database where you can cut it on live any way you want? Is that what you think? Good. Yeah, I don't know about that. I'd like okay. to. The question is, is it, a, is it considered, a, 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 if someone did a public records request for the survey, data that's in. Mm -hmm. Could they receive the survey data? Yes. Yeah. In the format that we currently have it. Right. Not necessarily Produce a sensible right. format. A fairly overwhelming right. amount yeah, of, it is an overwhelming of just right. raw information that right. and I would uh, John, I would be willing to I'm assuming you're talking about some meeting time yeah. during the week yeah, during the day. Right. Too. That's and, ideal. You know. Um, I would volunteer to be part of that. Yeah, I'll put some time in as well. Okay, I think it's very you. important stuff, and it's our survey, and you know, it helps if we explain the synthesis of it, the conclusions of it, and then, then there's a basis to at least go through the raw data with some understanding. Um, probably want to run it past the board as well, and we've got kind of an initial view, right? Yeah, comments. and obviously I, I can't speak for other boards, but I do think it's appropriate to involve the leadership of the school committee before you have a public discussion, sure. just so they understand whatever right. it is the data looks like and it's going to say. Okay. I'm just sensitive to the the issue of a, if it being a public record. Mm -hmm. yeah, it already so, is a public so, record. Right. Yeah, right. If anyone wants all the data, it could, we could post that, but it's going to be really hard to No, like, I, it's I, like I, reading I understand. I understand. Yeah. But working for the government, it's, when people ask you for information or, you know, people say, well, why didn't you give this to me three weeks ago or something like that? You know what you, you knew about this when, and you didn't tell me. Now maybe I'm too traumatized by hazardous waste stuff. But, <laughs> um, maybe. Anyway, never. Okay. All right. There was a question. Um, let's see. I think that leaves us at eight fifteen at the subject of the uh, schoolhouse common sign. You have a question, on there. George. Oh, sorry, sorry, question. Uh, oops. Sorry, George. Cash is forward. Just to. Uh, Excel freak and, and, <laughs> and all that. He's hired. Okay, done. <laughs> <He's> hired. <laughs> but I caution 
about going too much into trying to quantify the damage. Exactly. Hmm. I think that the, the answers, answers, what I've heard, what not, the, the policy aspects, the qualitative aspects of it are incredible. And I think, I've lived here for 28 years. I first uh, slept in a meeting, very interesting, I tell you, uh, is that there's a lot of lessons there, not just for the school board and committee, but for the whole town. A lot of lessons in the responses, and I think it should be taken in that spirit as opposed to fully quantifying it, exactly. knowing the demographics of it. I think there are messages. I think there are a lot of messages that people have and to be listened to. And uh, I, I found it very eye-opening and something very useful for the town. Thank you, Bob. Um, if I might ask, ask George, if you would just tell the board your economic development background, I think they'd be very interested. <laughs> well, I think, yeah, with measure to you, I've uh, worked in, my background is scientific, uh, PhD in physics and lasers and all that. But I've been doing business development for probably about 40 years, ended up uh, working at UMass Lowell, and during that stay, and I'm more recently, I've been involved with the Middlesex Three Coalition, which is up and down the yeah, three, Lexington, all on up. I'm an emeritus board member now, and that's an organization for uh, trying to work together, a number of communities, nine communities, working together for joint economic development. The theory being, if we get a business in Bedford, People in Delrica will benefit in Lexington because people will move there to do work in that, whatever the business is. Trying to come up with uh, uniform permitting processes, trying to get more better coordination with utilities when they're, you know, building a new uh, a new building, and so you don't have the street torn up in a serial manner, but it's all done in a parallel manner. So you try to be more efficient, and it's a it's a very good group and. I really enjoy working with them. I think it's something that, uh, you know, I don't know if Reading can do something like that with surrounding towns, mm -hmm. but uh, I've enjoyed working with that. Come, no, to, our, come to our uh, economic development forum. Yes, we'll be. You made the one with uh, Actually, Jay Ash. Yes, yes, absolutely. Yeah, I was going to say, I haven't, you know, thanks for bringing that up because I've worked with Jay on a few things, and I think there should be a lot of publicity for that, and I think he could be very helpful. He's been very helpful with uh, Middlesex 3. George, I'll make my comments I said earlier in a completely different context. We don't require any prerequisites in terms of skill. Uh, Knowledge so is always a benefit, but uh, we'd love to use you in some capacity because you've got both a past and a pedigree in this area, and we're you know having some something similar along the 93 corridor at some distant point in the future would just be fantastic. Yeah. We have so many shared interests with North Reading and Wakefield. We kind of do some regionalization, but. You're really thinking big now. You're thinking about at the next level of abstraction. Um, we have nine communities yeah. interested. Very good. Thank you. Thank Very you, good. George. Thank you. Okay. Um, yeah, why don't, we go, why don't we go to the hearing? No, we have to do the hearing. Um, no, we don't have to. Oh, we're late yeah. to that already. And it's there, a there question are people, of, probably people here for that. It doesn't matter. We still have to do it, right? At yeah. some point, yeah. So that we have to then to vote to extend it. Yeah, oh. I know. Yeah. Well, let's uh, start. Okay. Um, why don't you read the, the, uh, the attorney? The Ray, how shall we proceed? Do we read the notice of the hearing and then uh, continue it? It would be continued. To open in view of first. the, uh, or do we not read it at all because it wasn't properly noticed? I am indifferent whether you read it or not. You're going to have to read it again. Yeah. In and on whatever October day you, whatever yeah, day I you don't think it makes any sense. It. So I think it's fine okay. to simply mm -hmm. open the hearing okay. and immediately explain. I don't know, have you already explained what happened? Yeah. Um, so you don't have to do that again. You just vote to continue it. I don't think you need to. to uh, Mr. Chairman? Yes, please. Again. Please take notice that the Board of Selectmen of the Town of Reading will hold a public hearing on September 26, 2017 at 8 o'clock p.m. in the Selectmen's Meeting Room. 16 Lowell Street, Reading, Massachusetts, on the removal of a Board of Health associate member pursuant to Section 8.12.1.A of the Reading Home Rule Charter. A copy of the proposed document regarding this topic is available in the Town Manager's Office, 16 Lowell Street, Reading, Mass., Monday, Wednesday, Thursday from 7.30 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. 
Tuesday from 7.30 a.m. to 7 p.m. and is attached to the hearing notice on the website at www.readingma.gov. All interested parties are invited to attend the hearing or may submit their comments in writing or by email prior to 6 p.m. on September 26, 2017. Okay, um, as was said earlier, the notice for the Board of Health member was improperly processed. It never arrived and in fact returned to Town Hall today. We failed the statutory requirement to notice uh, with sufficient advance time. That'll be remedied and the proposal is to continue uh, the hearing that was to be tonight until the 14th. And um, October 10th, 9 p.m. And Ray, that will provide sufficient notice under the, 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 the charter? Said Without the, the 20, we won't have 20 days. We don't need to do the 20 days? October, 10th is a Tuesday. October 10th is that, your yeah, next that's regularly our scheduled next meeting. meeting. Isn't that what we said? You're just going to, no, because you're continuing. You're, you're, continuing. you're continuing. Okay. All right. What you failed to do was to to um, to provide the the written notice okay. with for in five days, which remember it means five business days. Yeah. Um, but you don't, the the twenty day um, for the uh, yeah. that that's just that the hearing can't begin can't sooner, sooner, sooner than twenty days, 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 days from the original. Two, two different process. things: the notice and the hearing. Yep. Uh, just to confirm, it is the tenth at our regularly scheduled meeting. <laughs> do we have a, do we have a time certain for nine that? Nine o'clock. Nine o'clock. Okay. Uh, I will move to continue uh, the hearing on the removal of the Board of Health Associate member to our meeting of October 10th, 2017 at 9 o'clock p.m. We have a motion. We have a second. Any further discussion? <coughs> hearing none, all those in favor of the vote? 5-0. Okay, the meeting is continued until the 10th at 9 o'clock. Um, why don't we double back to the School House Commons uh, sign request? Good evening. I'm Trey Josh Lincoln here tonight on behalf of Reading Equitable Housing LLC. This pertains to the comprehensive permit project at the former St. Agnes School. Um, we did appear before the CBA. We have had the comprehensive permit issued. Uh, at this point, one condition uh, was with regards to the selectman's favor relative to two no standing signs in front of the project. Mm -hmm. um, as you may recall, the site, there are two driveways. One is an access and the other is an exit. Approximately, it's approximately 70 feet apart from one another. Um, as part of the project, the town did engage uh, Green International as a traffic consultant. They determined that it would make sense to impose two signs here for no standing to ensure that there wouldn't be any sight line uh, impediment for folks entering and leaving the site. Uh, as a result of that, we did agree to incorporate it. Well, this, the uh, CBA wanted to make sure the selectmen had an opportunity to weigh in on that since the selectmen are responsible for all sides other way and that's where we are this evening uh, the parking traffic uh, task force did support this and again it was the town's consultant that recommended it in the first place with that i'm happy to answer any questions any questions from the board barry uh, so um actually I, I drive by there probably about 40 times a day um and but i never realized i don't notice that there's any um uh no parking sign what kind of signs of any are there now um so we're go basically going to not allow any parking or standing over there because of the sight lines. That's correct. Actually, it's also important to point out, really within the distance between these two uh, driveways, there's really not much space anyway. There's a crosswalk right within That's that right. area. Yeah. Uh, if you consider parking right next to the driveway, you're probably looking at nothing within 20 feet anyways. At most, you might have one parking space you can lawfully use there by putting these two signs in just to prove that it's that now. Uh, I think one of the issues was that with regards to park or school pickup, we would find that folks would just stand within this area. Right. Uh, but with redevelopment of this site, that would obviously be unsafe. Right. This area is pretty congested anyway. You've got Temple Street coming in from one side. Is there anything well, special it gets about it? Pardon me? It gets narrow. Yeah. The street narrows. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Is there anything special about the signage here that you, one would do differently, or is it just hung because of the congestion and the visibility of the sight lines? Uh, there was some proposal about a no parking sign, but that actually doesn't prevent standing. And so the more prohibitive is the no standing sign. Right. I'm sure no one's going to stand this idle while they're doing it. So it's just to ensure this? that yeah. Yeah, proper sight distance is <coughs> Any other questions from the board, Andrew? Is this the this entrance and exit? Which, uh, is is that, that encompass the St. Agnes Church? No, 
Is that ever logged in? It doesn't specifically. It has been logged in before. Right. It's just your phone. So there is, well, right now, actually, the entrance is on the, I guess we say it's the westerly side. Yeah. The exit is the easterly. That will be reversing as part of the project. That was part of the discussions with the town and the development review team and the traffic consultants. Any other questions from the board? No. If not, we have a motion or down. Yes. Move that the Board of Selectmen approve the Schoolhouse Common Sign Request as presented. I have a second. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? 5-0. Thank, Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Sorry for the delay. Um, next we have an economic development update. Um, sure, I'll do that quickly. Um, as George alluded to, you can tell George and I have talked a lot about economic development. Um, there's a meeting next Wednesday, 6 o'clock at the Public Library. Um, I think that's October 4th. An Economic Development uh, Summit, Symposium, Forum. We've given it different names. I think it ended up being Forum. Uh, Jay Ash, the Secretary of Housing and Economic Development, if you will, is the key speaker, the keynote speaker. Um, we have a lot of really interesting things uh, to go over. Although, honestly, a lot of it will just be a, a talking and listening. Um, depending on who accepts the invitations, we inv as Barry mentioned, we invited a lot of the development community. Um, we do know one developer with a current project will make a presentation or at least may, uh, say some words. Um, some other topics I wanted to hit on tonight. Um, I do want to formally tell the board and the community that the town of Wakefield and the town of Reading have been meeting extensively for the last three years. And we are arm in arm uh, attempting to build a joint DPW garage at Camp Curtis. So there's been rumors out there. Mr. Brown has been uh, aware of the rumors for a long time. Uh, I, I can't factually say that will happen, but I can say we can now have those public discussions. Uh, the board in the past has had some executive session discussions. I will now release those minutes over the you know as soon as I as I can. Um, Wakefield was going to make this announcement uh, with their board last night. I assume they did. I, I haven't heard differently. Um, it's a very challenging project, but it's a very exciting one. Uh, the two towns work together uh, about as well as two towns can, quite honestly. Uh, some of you have had reason to visit Wakefield on different topics, and, and you know that. Um, it is a very complex set of negotiations, as you can imagine. It involves the Army, the National Guard, it involves the state. Um, and, and the ch most challenging part about Camp Curtis is the command rotates so often um, without notice. They don't say, I'm going to Afghanistan, here's my replacement. So we have a discussion with someone and all of a sudden they're not there. And a couple of times I actually have got emails saying I am in Afghanistan, one case Iraq. Um, so that'll be a challenge. Um, Secretary Ash has been very helpful. We've met with uh, Brad Jones in his office with Secretary Ash and had our hands out uh, for as much money as they can help us with. Um, Thatcher Keezer, who's out at Devons, the town manager at Devons, actually is in the National Guard and his responsibility until he retires from the Guard is this exact type of thing, municipal relations. <coughs> I can tell you that the level of excitement among the people I just mentioned is huge. This will be the first ever joint municipal, let alone two municipal, uh, military base um, project if it comes to fruition. Um, I am told that the governor is very supportive. It's, it's ultimately a governor's decision. The governor can tell the military what to do. And I'm sure he does it cautiously. <laughs> um, but I just wanted to put that out there. It's been in the capital plan. Uh, without a lot of discussion, a lot of disclosure, the financing is going to be very creative and very challenging. Um, you will see a capital plan at November town meeting that is includes it in there within the levy. Isn't that the first time it's been in? That'll be the first the time that numbers are shown. Um, you know, I don't want to get too far ahead of myself, but you know, uh, the, the general fund water, sewer, and storm water will all pay a share. Wakefield will do the same. Um, we'll have then an opportunity, which is the real point, of moving DPW for economic development. Um, I don't expect this to be solved in a year, but I just did want to, it's been hard to have some of these discussions without being able to have a public update of you. So we will mention this in public at the Economic Development Forum with not more, much more information than I just told you. 
Uh, but I do want to tell you, um, especially for those of you that have been to meetings, as you know, Wakefield is all in. Years in the making. Yes, yeah. years in the making. Years Thank in the you. making to this point. Yeah. There's going to be two parts of this equation. One, the cost of the new facility, and two, uh, the potential return mm -hmm. if we do sell that land or ground lease it, whatever we do. Right. Uh, is that a high on Andrews? I know it wasn't on the MAPC list of sites that they were looking at. It wasn't one of the Actually, zones. It was. Yeah, no, well, no, actually, it was just north. Uh, well, north. It was, it was yeah. the edge of the zone because Not of that. Oh, because there was a facility yeah. out right. but it. Probably, you know, so um, is Andrew working actively oh, to yeah, absolutely. market this? Right. Um, I, I don't want to go into names, but uh, you know, Frame Corporation, I know yeah. you know yeah. who they are. Um, I've met with them, Andrew's met with them more extensively than I have. Um, the fairest combination I can make is they are very aware of our intentions and very interested. Um, okay. All the landowners in and around RMLD are very aware and interested. Mm -hmm. um, this is not going to be just a sale of DPW yard all by right. itself right. in the ideal world. It is going to be a substantial. You're going to assemble. Right. We have. Of parcels. Uh, I have brought developers through there. I, I'm guessing Andrew has too. I don't know for a fact. Yep. All of them. Um, they are highly interested in the large parcel, largest okay. parcel possible. Um, there is some interest in possibly going over to. Um, to the uh, market basket side of the tracks, if you will, yeah. and Good. including that for redevelopment. Should the challenge be. being the tracks and bridging the tracks in yeah. some sensible way. Um, there will be, um, in addition to the cost of a building a facility at Camp Curtis, there will be significant infrastructure costs, roads, street sites. Right. And again, we've that. already had our hand out to Jay Ash for a minimum of $5 million. That's um, just and they are very interested. Yeah. Because this is this is a very good project. Mm -hmm. This is exactly what Jay wants. Right. Towns helping themselves. No, I mean at, when the governor when the go, uh, the governor spoke um, at the uh, Mass Municipal, um, or uh, he talked about his number one priority being to let go of unproductive public land to get it into the hands of communities who know how best to develop it. This is the poster child project for that. Um, I mean, he talked about it as number one economic development proposal. That was before GE came, though, but still, I think it's still pretty high on the list. Um, so it fits right in. I don't think it's quite big enough for Amazon, yeah. but we're trying. No, but, yeah. <laughs> well, the fact that it extends potentially into the adjacent parcels, this could be a, a much larger activity yeah. Yeah. before we're, right. it's fully sited. And, you know, if, you know. You talked about Walkersbrook too. This could be Walkersbrook right. two and a half. Yeah, yeah and, but just to be, you know, as much as I'm very excited about that, and, and I mean that genuinely, um, this is not going to produce tens of millions of dollars in annual tax revenues. Um, it'll help. The most optimistic I could possibly be is four million, and I don't think it'll do four million. But every little bit helps. Walkersbrook produces about two million currently. Is that net of the cost of the DPW or? No, that's just okay. gross. So it'll pay for the debt for yeah. 10, 15 years. Of which we're sharing with Wakefield. Right. So it's not right. like it's going to be yeah. all on us. Right. The, just the bigger issue forward. is, yeah. I mean, we're in this for the long haul. Right. I mean, yeah. if four million of revenue starts to stream, that's going to improve theoretically at two and a half percent. And that four million of revenue, you know, out about 12 years, you know, 14 years becomes, you know, eight million. And in a bigger way, the efficiency of how the DPW is able to operate is also a factor that is right. unknown but real. Correct. Um, when you start to look at that operationally, I mean, I mean, one of our charges is to look under every rock and spend taxpayer money, you know, prudently um, with value consciousness. And this kind of thing is exactly that. Um, I mean, it's... And, yeah, and basically, well, the other thing we can factor in is the $2 million we're going to save for not having to build, build a cemetery garage. <laughs> So, don't go there. I'm kidding. Well, okay. <laughs> but, 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 you have to do yeah. That. No, I know. I'm just, um, rewind the uh, tape, please. The other, you know, the other, the other, the other piece of this thing, too, is while, you know, we talk about the operational side of the budget, right? And we're talking about what an override might look like in April. Um, I think it's important that, you know, communication being the number one thing is that while we're excited about this, and $4 million of new revenue in the CIP sector will have a huge impact. 
it is not going to um, basically take away the need for maybe doing overrides in the it's not going to solve our yeah, operation, none of this but, solves the problem but what it's going to do it's going to make life a lot more comfortable for a lot longer um, and you know just but I, but it's important though that we communicate that's like oh you now you're going to build this we don't need an override well you know well, ma no, maybe we, we won't talk, but you're talking Look, the best time to have done this would have been 20 years ago. Yeah, the next exactly. best time is as soon as we can, which so could be three years from now. A whole series of these things that we're yeah. looking at now yeah. and aggressively moving right. towards need to get started 10, 12, 15 years right. ago. Right, but, but the second best well, time is now. Yeah. I mean, always yeah. now is the, it, it, absent it having done it before. You and the it size now. of it intimidates and says to people, it, you'll never get it done. And, and you guess what? If you don't try, you won't, right. right? So let's go get it. The size really, you know, it's shouldn't scare us. Actually, the size is... It's it's easier and better to do something of this size well, know more than maybe that. some of the smaller ones because now yeah. you are attracting right. a much deeper Bandwidth. pocket, yeah, you are. higher higher impact player. And so, well, the other thing that we haven't talked about, and I don't know how you you know, I know you were working on a number, call it four million for purposes of discussion at the moment, and I'm not sure if that's based on. Is it based on? strictly the development of that property no not at all that's the whole site yeah because what Everything. yeah what happens is all boats rise when right, you start right. doing something special there yeah the site it by changes itself it changes the value of, of all the surrounding property right and, and just to give the board a preview I, I believe i've said this in the past but i don't know if i've said it at a, at a meeting um you will have your eyes reluctantly open that housing might be possible down there and might might be okay um, I will circulate to you later in the week. Uh, Jesse has finished her report. It's really, it's, it's in addition to being a nice job, it's really easy to read. George got a sneak preview of it a couple days ago. He liked it. Um, you will see some, <coughs> I won't say analysis, it's not that deep, just some mention of multifamily housing projects in Reading. You will see some, if you will, economically past successes and failures. Um, and the successes make us realize that some form of multifamily housing down there is okay economically um, and you know we'll just we'll get into that uh, oh, yeah. more on the you look at you look at everyone touts market street as you know the, their nirvana yeah, people don't realize that there's 250 units of housing back there exactly. as well so and that's what makes it work right very exactly. clearly yeah yep. economic for as far as customer base it's and also the economics of the, pro of the property yeah. good okay no that's all thank you time frame <laughs> for what aspect you can help uh, soon as the garage is built, I would guess it's five years. I would guess. <laughs> I was kidding. I know you. And I'm going to suggest to you, uh, if you fill the building down there, you're going to have an operational nightmare just trying to get back to range with it. Up here, up Salem Street in the morning, you get it. Okay. If you need up more, you lots of chances. There's, there's other ways to get there, Bill. There's other ways to get there. Yeah. You have to go up sale. I know. I've paid it the round. Okay. No, here. What's next? Parkersburg. Uh, the next discussion is the 75 Pearl Street lease amendment. I want to do that. I've got sure. behind us as well. Oh, okay. Well, there's the explanation. Um, so one of the, actually, one of the first puzzles that was placed on um, uh, before me when I first became town council was we have this, um, this lease on 75 Pearl Street that um, seems to say that we that we in fact have leased back. So this is the uh, school property that was sold with a lease back, so we could use the soccer field. Right. But the actual lease that was in place seemed to say that the whole premises were in fact leased back, and um, really that's not what anybody intended, and we really need to fix that. And uh, so for a number of, uh, of years, um, every few months we contact council for. Uh, the property owner to see if they were interested in fixing that and they really weren't very interested um, but uh, more recently they uh, it turns out they were interested and that's because they um, uh, were refinancing the property um, so um, the point of this lease is that it's uh, that it gives the town the uh, access to and the use of the soccer field um, 15 parking spaces and um, the driveway, the access drive to get to those parking spaces. And that was really not very clear before, but hopefully it's very clear now. So we've negotiated a, a, a revision to the lease 
um, that uh, uh, that more clearly states what the town um, has retained and um, so satisfies the new lender that um, uh, that they're not lending money on a worthless piece of property. So that's what this is about. Um, the, in my view, the lease amendment is what was intended in the first place. And we've now got it. Got it right. Mechanically, Ray, how does this overlay the existing document and make clear that it, it replaces and supersedes? This is, this is called the first amendment to the lease, and it okay. will be recorded. The, the original lease is recorded in the registry, and this will be recorded once it's okay. executed. And so it will, it will be in the chain of time. Good. Any other questions from the board? No. Nope. Okay. Okay. Do we need to see the lease? You should. You should have it in you, your packet. You should have it in your packet. Yep. There's a copy there. You guys, guys. Yeah. It's. Oh yes, yes. yes. It's in here. Yes, yes. Okay. Yes. Yep. All Any right. other questions for the board? If not, I'll entertain a motion. Move that the board of selectmen approve the lease at 75 Pearl Street as presented. Second. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Five zero. Okay. Thank you. Science. Yes. Coming around with signatures. Yep. Next, we have to close the warrant. I think we have to wait till nine, technically, Mr. Oh. Chairman. So we need to take some other things. Up. What, what do we? That's not a hearing, though. Is that a requirement, Ray? We wait till nine to close the warrant in case somebody could walk in with a warrant article. I guess that—that's the theory. Yeah. Anything, Bill? <laughs> <laughs> not just not just Bill. Yeah. Are you saying that we're actually now ahead of time? Slightly, yeah. Slightly. Wow. Got the hour back from the hearing. Yeah. So we request a buyer. Is it okay to proceed? Yeah, why don't we take, uh, why don't we take, take five break? minutes yeah. for a while yeah. break? We You're a magician, a Mr. Mr. Arena. Yeah. Sorry? Yeah. You're a magician. I mean, we're actually well, went ooh, from there to here. We'll, uh, we'll re the convene at 845. Oh, yeah. Uh, we have the hearing. You wouldn't be.
in there because we, we're not posted. Any anyone Bob, interested? Bob, you planning to be there? This is tomorrow, did you say? Tomorrow at 6, you have FinCon yeah, later? So. Right. I, I, think I, I can't I'm believe that would go more than an hour and a half. So I think yeah, I can it. just leave. Okay. Any it other does. board member interested in attending tomorrow? Two meetings tomorrow. What time is it at? 6? Yeah. 6 p.m. Yeah. 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 So yeah, I can go probably 6.30, 6.45, and i got to join those guys. Can't be there at 6? Oh, yeah, I can be there at 6. I just have to leave. Okay. Is everyone FinCon confirmed? FinCom is 7.30, right? Um, CAB is confirmed as far as I know. Uh, Phil Pacino will be there and John Stumpek from uh, the okay. RMLD. Those are the two reps. Okay. Yep. And again, the purpose of this uh, meeting is to address the instructional motion uh, from town meeting uh, suggesting that we try to negotiate uh, some sort of indexing of the annual payment in lieu of taxes that <coughs> the town of Reading from the RMLD. Right. Right now, it's been kind of up and down every year. There's no given pattern to the increase. So I guess the purpose of this sector, Bob, is to, I guess we're going to talk about some negotiating points kind of in the public. No, no, no. no. I, I just, I left it on as an agenda item, okay. not knowing when that other meeting would happen, and just so you could yep. update the board. Okay. No more than what you said, I'm sure. That yeah, I would prefer to keep the strategy yeah. behind closed doors. It's seven minutes. If you guys um, want to try to tackle the BOS policies, I was just going to say, yeah, let's do that. Uh, maybe up for the chief's benefit since he's going to be tired pretty soon. <laughs> um, we can come to the part of your policy. I heard he never gets tired. He's here for it. <laughs> well, he never sleeps. He never sleeps. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is for the class. Uh, I think it's one, two, three vehicles. Let me just find it. Um, just just to give a little a bit of an outline, the uh, discussion tonight is, is just meant to be, a, a, if you will, a raw discussion. Um, we have no real sense of what the board does or doesn't want to do. Most of Article 3 or, or Section 3 in your licenses have been taken care of by the liquor license part is the hugest part. Mm -hmm. Kino was added, and we're just tonight going to discuss anything else you're interested in. And specifically, I did ask the Chief to come for this Section 3, 4, Class 1, 2, and 3 motor vehicle licenses. Um, just to share his thoughts on uh, what the policies are versus what they should be, his estimation. Chief? Good evening. So my, my biggest thing is we were talking about discussing I think it was last year about the second-hand deals. Um, mm -hmm. in um, and the more I've thought about it, spoken to other chiefs in the area, I am fine with if we deals with second-hand articles, if, it was, if it's the main thing they're doing, the second-hand goods, for example, the gold store we had on Haven Three for a yep. while, that was their main thing was, was second-hand articles. But for fingerprinting for used cars, or fingerprinting for, quite honestly, for fingerprinting Sims Jewel for sells them, uh, uh, second-hand watch here and there, I don't see the need. I don't. I, I, I've mm -hmm. talked about the chief's theory, and they have the same uh, ballpark thought processes. And to do what we're looking for, would really mean for second-hand goods, that that's your sole purpose, the second-hand but, but this text is about vehicles proper. Which right. Well, I think part of this, we, we would consider with um, was this part of the class two and three. Uh, right. That right. Were, that were for, for fingerprinting all those gentlemen as well that we had here before. That was my and weren't some of those, I mean, some of those people were, they've been doing business in this town for 40 years. Right. And so maybe their primary yeah. business is body work or, you know, right. repair. Right. And they sell a car or two. It seemed yeah. like it was... Right. Less seemed like more to me right, with, right. with them. Um, but for the rest of the for the rest of the two or three, I'm, I'm okay with whatever you want to do. It was more of that policy concern I had last year that we had talked about. And I think that after considering to consult the other chiefs in the area, that seems to be the way to go. So just to paraphrase, if the business primary revenue stream more than fifty percent is used articles, then we should probably be, you know fingerprint them like go by our actual buyer, right, you know. Yeah. Like, I guess we don't get revenue statements, so you'd have to figure out our, you know, subjectively. Right. Do we? Do we have? Well, well we have a consignment places? store, for example. No. I mean, yeah, but, but so that's not vehicle, is that, or is that? No, it's cover everything. 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 It's a, uh, it's really yeah. everything, but we're talking about vehicles. We're just trying to think out loud because uh, the used uh, thing uh, then triggered the thought about you know houses are used too. So do, should we have to do real <laughs> estate agents, right? Oh, them more than anybody. Right. <laughs> <laughs> But, it, you know, it ripples, right, when you think about the used lens. And I guess the thought is if it's secondhand material or previously owned and it's their primary business, um, it makes more sense than if it's new product and they've got a storefront, et cetera. Um, and on the motor vehicles, likewise, 
you'd, you'd back up on the class two, class three? I, yeah, because honestly, most of that's so regulated nowadays from the from the state. You know, class one is dead all mm hundred -hmm. yeah. percent. Even two and three, you know, you go through the registry and everything else. So on God, I don't, I don't, we don't see the need most of the time. Yeah, the risk is already mitigated. Right. right. Compared to the guy who sells a wash, who's walking into the place we had on Haven Street for a while, and he just needs to get rid of it that night, get it fifty bucks for it. You know. Um, Bob or Ray, is there any way, if, at first blush it feels arbitrary to say based on percentage of new versus used, <coughs> if not arbitrary, it's at least difficult to assess. Um, any initial thoughts about that as a, a screen in terms of who the policy would apply to and who it wouldn't? How would you formulate something like that? Well. So it's easy to formulate. It's not so easy to, to implement to, because you you know you can just say that the primary the primary business is the sale of used articles, um, and that works fine um, most of the time because you know the. Um, well, we have a we have such a store. You have such a store, right? Right. That it's so sort they of take consignments, and you know, yeah. it's a thriving yeah. business. So, actually, so it, it's sort of obvious. The, the <coughs> problem is, is you know, when you've got a store that sort of mixes new and used articles and, and what have you. Um, I mean, you know, it, there isn't a way to that I can think of that you can assign a specific formula. So you put a word like primarily, and then you use some judgment. Okay. Yeah. Can I suggest that you use your judgment here? I mean, we have a policy. If we have to reword yeah. the policy to give right. you the latitude you need, I, I, I think we should be doing that. Okay. I, mean, I, I agree. I'm just wondering how, you know, how would you do it narrowly on the question of how would you assess it, but I, I accept what you're saying. I, I do think it's a judgment call, and it, and it is a public safety issue, and, you know, here's the chief. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, I think giving him that kind of latitude inside the framework of this policy makes seems to me to make perfect yeah, sense. I agree. Just to be clear where we are, this this is section three point three and three point four, issue of peddler's license and issue of count class one, two, three motor vehicle licenses. Yes. It also and it's not in your packet tonight, but it also involves the, the criminal history check authorization under five point four for the general bylaws. And that's where actually I was going with this thing. Last year came up probably uh, sorry, before you were on the board, yeah. he spoke about uh, deals of second hit articles, and I was concerned with the, with the class two and three licenses for this. That was my primary mm -hmm. purpose last year. We're coming up mm -hmm. here, so I told Bob yesterday that that would be my major purpose to come here tonight to revisit that part and say, let's have to speak in the new of the departments as well. Um, it's more important for the primary purpose, like gold and things like that, so you know that type of, of article than cars in general. Um, so to follow up on that, maybe it's obvious, but um, if the board agrees with the chief, um, we will have some work to do for annual town meeting to change a bylaw. That's all. So some of this is policy number three, something that does overlap. Uh, okay. But again, we're sort of looking for your advice or direction so we can sort of lay out those paths. I, I'm fine with the proposal that's been made to, to okay. let the chief. Yeah. 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 Sure it sounds like the board is as well. I agree. Uh, okay. Are you interested in input on your other comments or comments um, in general? We can do them now or we can do them after you close the warrant. It makes no difference. Okay. That's that's really all I asked the chief to stay. Okay. For, so. why, don't we, uh, yep. why don't we delay the rest of these comments unless somebody yep. has in particular. I think the only one that jumps out at me is, and I sent you a note, Bob, over the weekend, this whole sharing economy has changed the whole dimension of how we think about you know, 20 years ago, you told your children to stay away from strangers in cars, and now we summon them on the internet to pick us up. Right? <laughs> so, real changes. <laughs> True. Yeah. Yeah, so you have the whole Lyft and well, it's you know, Air, Uber, Airbnb, Springs, Lyft, yeah. Uber, all of this. Uh, the, 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 the company doesn't own any assets, and the assets are contractors. And the Airbnb is going to be zoning regulations. So yes. That, that's mm -hmm. going to be an enforcement nightmare. Do we have that going on here? It's everywhere. It yeah. is. Go to Airbnb now. Board. You can look up Reading. Mm. And actually, this is a great place for Airbnb. Right. And, and I think the problem with any of these regs is they don't... Um, Except we can't tax them. Yeah. Yeah. Not quite. They comprehend a world, you know, a generation ago where taxi cab companies set up and rental car companies set up in 
in a hard asset, a hard brick and mortar store and ran a business and it doesn't even work that way anymore. It's like we're talking about, you know, horses and buggies. So I don't know how to edit this, but we have to, I don't know if there's any precedent. Has anyone else tried to go at this other than say the cities who probably have a better the shot at it? Mm -hmm. the city. mm -hmm. I could see that because they probably have a bigger demand for local. But most folks here are just running down to the airport, so it's going to be real hard to pick up. Chief, do you, do you, do you um, have it, or heard any complaints from Reading residents about Uber drivers in town? No. The only thing I have heard about is the opposite. We've had Uber drivers have any complaints. People throwing them in the back of their cars at 1 o'clock in the morning when they get dropped off. In Reading? We've had that several times in the park with the people that are they're upset. <laughs> so not to do with the, the regulars, it's not, it's not the drivers themselves. Sorry That's a different problem. Well, we're glad they're not driving. Sorry, That's I asked. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least they, they want drivers. That's, That's right. right. That's true. But that's the only thing I've taken recently. We've had a couple times a log, and one one thirty in the morning is coming this way. No, not going up. Right. And from what I've done in Uber, I can tell you that's a that's a big problem in, in the industry. Every one of these guys, when I Wait, jump in, what did you them. say? What from what you've done? <laughs> yeah, I was gonna, you want to rephrase <laughs> that? I'm probably over 250 rides now, and uh, every, every time I'm in, I just say, you know, how long have you been doing this? Blah blah blah, and they all say, you know, the big problem is one in the morning. No. <laughs> yeah. Well, you shut your phone off, can't you? Well, a lot of these guys are working full time jobs, oh, and, so and that's when they work, right? Mm -hmm. so, so, John, you you point out a, a good. A very tough problem. It's, I was reading that all of the policies on that and it they don't exist anymore. Don't exist anymore. The only, the only piece I thought that was still kind of had value was if a taxi puts on the side of its car Redding, you know, as a Redding taxi. A Redding business. Yes. Or, yeah. yeah. I, I don't think I, we have anymore. I, but oh, I don't no, know if no. they exist. They've all disappeared. We've There's no cab stands. We haven't had yeah. a cab. No. You have limousines. For a long time. Party buses right. and that right. sort of thing. <laughs> there he goes. <laughs> Party okay. bus and the marijuana bus. Are Times gonna change. <laughs> all right, so um, <laughs> we'll defer further discussion on this, but that's probably the hardest nut to crack right there. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Um, thank you. Have a good night. Thank you. Chief. Have a good night. Thanks, Chief. Did you have a notice? No, you don't have to read a notice. Thank you. Oh, that's right. Now, well, we'll discuss and then. Do you want me, which, how do you want to do it? Motion first and then discussion, or discussion and then motion on the, the warrant? Why don't we make the motion now while right. the discussion is Move that the Board of Selectmen close the warrant for a subsequent town meeting. Uh, we don't need the date on there. Or do we? Okay. Consisting of, I believe there's only 10 still, 10 articles to take place. Oh, here it is. Sorry. On November 13th, 2017. Didn't read ahead far enough. I guess it's on there. Yeah. Um, let me just put up the outline behind me and then we can go through the wording. So I'll go through this first. Uh, the first three articles are prescribed by the Charter uh, reports. Um, I've not checked with Alan, but I believe he may want to give an update on the 375th celebration. I know they're meeting and I know they have these things that I just saw earlier today. So. Wow. First I've seen of them this year. And then the school superintendent and the uh, light department general manager always give an annual report. I'm not aware of any other reports. Um, just looking around. The permanent building committee does want to give a report, but <clears throat> they are part way through the buildings. And they want to give a full report, so I'll get in touch with the chair as to whether he wants to start it in November and finish in April or wait till the whole of April. Um, they've done extensive work in the schools so far. Uh, walking through, they wanted to climb on roofs. We had to tell them that we didn't have insurance to allow them to do that. Uh, but they're being very thorough. Uh, instructional motions, you know, as always, capital plan will take some uh, some changes. Any they will include. They will include the uh, skylights. Yes, yes, okay. it will. And I'm happy to talk about that if if you want. Um, uh, I put a memo that I had written to the school committee in your packet over the weekend. There's also some current year budget amendments, including paying for capital, for instance. I didn't mention earlier, but we have somewhere in the neighborhood of 375,000 additional new growth above and what was beyond as budget. Yeah, that's great. That's, um, that's, a, that's an early economic development. Mm -hmm. Can you can you, can you put your figure on if that Where? was any like one Where? big project or definitely not one of of big one. Because there's Lots a of lot of big ones that are sort of just starting. Redding right? Woods had to be some of it. Yeah, some of it was yeah. Redding Woods, Redding some of those Johnson Woods. Maybe, maybe it's coming yeah. online. Finishing those out. It's none of the downtown stuff yet. Yep. Yeah, there's yeah, three big ones. Hit. None of that's hit yet. Right. Um, <clears throat> I mean, that's great. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's sustainable probably. So. And there's there are others in the pipeline. Yes, absolutely. <coughs> yep. um, we have two placeholders. I don't know of any prior year bills, but we'll have that and we'll ask you to put that in there because they may turn up between now and November. Um, we'll also ask you to um, disp allow us to dispose of surplus. Right now I don't have a list. I expect I probably will have one by uh, November. We have a specific debt authorization we'd ask you to rescind. This has been done twice before by town meeting. And happily now we have language that's been approved by bond council. So when we ask for debt authorization in the future, we'll never have to do this again. So this will be the last time we have to do this. This is to res rescind unused uh, this all has to do with the fact that you might sell $10 million worth of par value at mm -hmm. a premium such that you gain $15 million worth of money. Got it. And you have to, and yeah. since you didn't want, you only wanted $10 million of money, you then sell less than $10 million of par. But you've been authorized to sell all $10 million, but you didn't need to, so you have to remove that authorization is the simplest way I can explain it. it in the low interest rate environment, um, I was going to say clients, but really, it's salesmen who want the bigger, fatter coupon, and so they want—they don't mind paying 110 or 120 on, on a dollar in order to get the bigger coupon. So, so well, can I ask a theoretical question? Yep. What happens if it goes the other way, where instead of that car it goes, <laughs> and, and, and now, and now we need 10 million, and we only got nine and a half? Yeah, we never in the history of the markets have you ever been required to sell at a discount you just have to pay a larger interest rate so I've thought about that and I just I can't conceive of the realistic reason unless if we get like rampant deflation okay. um, so I don't think that's a concern so we can't take advantage of the market and we only we have to kind we of do, say but not what we unless yeah. obvious ways. Right. Okay. Um, there's a, uh, a fine-tuning item, if you will, to f uh, change the marijuana uh, fines in the bylaw from, I think it's $300 down to $100. We say $300. I believe it's state law says $100. So Ray has instructed the police some time ago to only charge $100, otherwise it's illegal. Uh, and we should line up our bylaws. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> the second uh, bylaw, if you will, is a lengthy one. There's either 17 or 18 subsections, I don't recall, and I'm happy to put that up on, on the screen shortly. <coughs> this is a, a cleanup, if you will, done by the bylaw committee with town council and Matt Cornelis's help. Uh, this is a result of charter changes made a couple years ago, and this is more or less moving bylaws into line with changes made by the charter or any other obvious uh, sort of deficiency that's not a change in meaning. This is Article 9. Correct. In the and the last article, as you mentioned, is the Climate mm -hmm. Advisory Committee. I wasn't really sure, Ray, whether the Board of Selectmen should sponsor that or the Climate Advisory Committee should, should sponsor it. Um, it's, it's very rare, if at all, that a non-elected board has sponsored an article right. in the past other than FinCom. So I don't know if there's any easy answer to that. This uh, is all about protocol and etiquette okay, and so nothing, it's nothing about with law. law. Okay. Okay. So you can do whatever I, I would, you want. I wouldn't, you know, listen, it's their thing. Let them do Let it. Them yeah. Do yeah. It. Okay. Great. All right. Yeah. That's well, fine. I mean, it's the, the fact that we're sponsoring it doesn't mean we endorse it. The fact that no, we're, we're not we're sponsoring, sponsoring it as a courtesy. The fact that we're not sponsoring doesn't mean that we're against it. Right. Yeah. Your, uh, your tradition, if you will, is to sometimes sponsor, even for the school committee, hmm. you have sponsored articles. Yep. And they are. You can have it both ways by saying, Board of the sponsor is the Board of Selectmen on behalf of. Yeah, that's what I, I, I like. like that. We have sponsored them and not voted in favor of them. Correct. Well, we, we will take a position or not at some future. Well, there are cases yeah. where we are literally sponsoring an article for their benefit. We're just putting the more together is, tonight. I'm yeah, not, this uh, emanated from them. Yeah, so I agree. Right. Let, them, uh, yeah. let yep. them sponsor. All right. So if you'd like, I can put up your packet and go over any of these in detail. I, I think most of them are simple, with the exception possibly the second to last one or the last one. Bob, you know, those, while we're talking about bylaws, um, we have a couple of committees that are empowered to do certain regulations, conservation being one, board health being another. Do those ever find the light of day in front of an elected body, or do they just become regulations and add to Redding's book of regulations? How does that work? So they are authorized to adopt regulations, and those regulations um, um, uh, are supposed to be 
on file with the uh, town clerk. Um, and oh, I think they are. You know, okay. I just but no, they, no, no they, do, they don't require us, you know. yeah, uh, yeah. the approval of any elected. That question has come up a couple of times in the last several months, mm -hmm. you know, from citizens who said, you know, okay, so I see this law. Mm, yeah. um, how did it get there? We said, well, it's a regulation. It's not really a law, and I, I think, and I think I'm correct to say that. And and we have several committees that are empowered by the state to write such regulations. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Those being and some that are empowered um, by bylaws to to write regulations. Yeah. And I, I'm guessing historic is similar. I mean, are they empowered? They must be empowered by the state. Are you talking about the historical commission or yeah. the historic district commission? Both. Both. I think. I they, think the answer is yes. They, yes, they definitely have policy. Okay, it's just a point of clarification. While we were, okay. while yeah. that was up but there. The fact, there, there is nothing magical about the fact that they're elected or appointed that that either adds or subtracts to their rulemaking authority. They they either have a statute or a bylaw that authorizes them to adopt regulations, okay. or they don't. And I. That was the way I answered the question, but I wasn't sure I was on firm ground, and I told the person, mm -hmm. I told actually several people that I would find an opportunity to raise that question All because, right. because, you know, in each case, it's, well, shouldn't an elected, somebody elected be, mm -hmm. you know, responsible. responsible for that? And I said, I, you know, I actually don't, I, I think in this case, that's not, the, that's not the way it works. Well, I mean, in the sense that it's, sort of secondary in that we appoint the people that make the regulations. There's a connection to There's a connection elected to it, officials. But, right. And the reason why this ex exists the way it is is that they want to keep it out of potentially the realm of political and just sort of have independent thinkers come in and do that with, under the um, under the with the freedom of sort of um, operating what they think is the best interest whatever that issue yep. is. So it's got its pluses and it's got its minuses. Yep. Bob? Um, if you'll think back a year or so <clears throat> when John Fudo left to uh, become the executive director of the Y, um, his charge was to oversee a number of the administrative uh, staff to many of the elected, or sorry, appointed boards in, in Gene's department. So this does not constitute CPDC, you know, the planning boards, if you will, zoning boards. Um, when we had to eliminate his position as part of the budget last year, that was a pretty serious blow to the idea that we could somehow integrate all the boards and communicate better with you. It's still a need. I don't know how to fully solve it, and I know we're not doing a perfect job, far from it. Ideally, you should have no surprises for whatever board is doing, even if they have full authority to do so. Yeah. And there's usually, uh, it's just lack of communication. I don't think any of them are doing things nefariously. No, I agree with that. They just don't know. And we don't always know because we can't staff every meeting. Right. So, John. John. To that end, I think this is something, that's a supervisory position yes. that has great merit. And I know from a budgetary standpoint it had to go away. I think it's something you have to look at. Yeah. All you have to do is look at what was going on in this room tonight. And I think some of those things get, um, I mean, it doesn't necessarily change somebody's opinion, and people are entitled to their opinion, and that's fine. Uh, I'm fine with that. But if there was a quarterback, which yeah. is kind of the way I view John's job, um, I think the flow of communication would have been yeah. um, better. Yeah, um, I, I, I think we need to think about that as we go forward. I mentioned to John that um, I think it was two weeks ago we had a meeting of chairs and vice chairs of three committees under Gene. First, perhaps, and ever in Reading's history of these three at the same time. And it was, it was both unusual and productive, is the fairest way to say it. It was almost as if they were all introducing themselves to each other in some way, even if they're social friends. Um, we have a real problem. We now have staff that's generally full-time in these areas and they so they can communicate with each other um, we didn't used to have that when I, when I started but we still have boards that are if you will in their silo because that's where we put them yeah. you are this right. board Stevie this is your right. responsibility they all would benefit from a bigger picture it doesn't mean they have to change anything they do but they would have an understanding of some bigger issues yeah and this meeting was extremely productive in that sense it, there was a specific piece of property at issue, and there were three <coughs> different authorities that had three different bites of that property, yeah. if you will, and they all found it very helpful. Not knowing what the other two were doing. 
to see what all the pieces we need to get our volunteers in the same kind of yeah. mode because yeah. when you can do that with the with the yeah. professional staff and you see how productive it is I believe that would happen you know, and, and with it, the volunteers it, as well when I joined FinCom um, you were the um, you were the finance director right I walked in and I got a um, binder probably about yeah. that thick of policies past budgets um, you know reading material that kind of introduced me to what it was like to, to serve on FinCon. We do ap absolutely nothing to onboard our volunteers in, yeah. in, in, in any, you know, I don't care whether it's the town forest committee. We don't do that for or, FinCon anymore, just or, in case you're yeah, I have mine <laughs> if I want, yeah, yeah, if anybody wants it. Sure. We didn't do it at the Board of Selectmen. Yeah, right? there's some way to online onboard. That seems to be the big um, industry. Today. You know, I, I, I think that, that Well, the, there are actually the opportunities, Barry, to go to workshops and classes those materialize for everybody and they if they're listed they get the emails you got I know you guys get the same kind of yeah. emails I get all the time I'm buried in them um, and, I, and I think our volunteers get a similar kind of email to offer that not that we shouldn't do something locally I'm but, not but also with too that. for better or for worse this board is the policy setting board for the town at least on the on the municipal side right um, and everybody raises their hand to volunteer, whether it's you know a, a really dense and complex matters like conservation, CPDC, health, you know, to things that you know uh, aren't as sort of you know complex. But everybody raises their hand and they volunteer. But and, and then everybody goes and they and they do their thing. And a lot of these committees, the chairs have been in there for a long time, um, and. They merrily go along thinking about what's you know what's best for that particular thing. Yeah. We need to do a better job as selectmen um, at, to basically. I'm not talking about supervise, um, but to at least let everybody know that you know as far as the enterprise goes, here's what our priorities are. We talk about our priorities all the time, and it doesn't mean that we're getting in anybody's sandbox or saying you need to be doing this, this, and this. But when every but when a volunteer comes and whether it be, you know, for anything, you know, they should know that yes, this is what my responsibility is. But the overall kind of goal of what we're trying to accomplish as a town is this, and to see their role sort of in in that. So when the, they ask the question, you know, what am I doing here? The first thing that comes to mind is how am I forwarding the town of Reading, not you know my interest in this particular topic and that's a supervisory capacity that you know listen we're volunteers too so I'm not saying that you know we have extra time but I just think that we really need to do a much better job in doing what you just did integrating the different boards and committees with each other but also you know that that there's a mission here well you know Mary, I've been through four cycles of committee assignment and this exact topic has been discussed honestly at length each time we you know we talk about committees and I matter of fact I endorse that idea I think the idea of them speaking to of, of getting the bigger picture is really important I think it avoids the silo syndrome which I don't think is healthy for anybody really um, I think that if so what it gets down to is we have discussed this that I'm directly aware of four times in the last four years. Right. It typically happens about May and then we drift off into the summer <laughs> and you know. You know what we do it when maybe when we reorganize uh, right after whatever you know town election and town meeting um, there's just an annual convening of the chairs and co-chairs of it yes and it's just where are we what are we doing what's the focus not that they have to listen but just to see that maybe put it in context of what I'm doing on my committee to the general context of the town you almost need to do a like a half day workshop or a Saturday mm -hmm. morning or something like right. that I mean there was one time when we did a Saturday morning when we were working on strategic planning I think right you you did yes right Right. But the board, right? We did as a as, as, as a board as, of select. Yeah, I, think I just think I it's got to be. We got to put that in. That's for everybody be. else. I mean, chairs and vice okay. chairs, and you can't. You're never going to find a night. No, it's impossible. Where some ways we're designed wrong. And the more I don't want to say fractionated, but the more different flavors of committees we have, and um, that 
should work together, but don't. Organizationally, they'll become disparate. You get this kind of blinder effect. Right. It, I don't know the way to do this, but we almost have to do it structurally. We can't do it by another set of meetings because no one's really got the time and no. it's not sustainable. But if there's a way to organize these so they either have a joint meeting, and maybe they're on two sides of the room and 10% of the meeting is on a common topic and they go back, okay. that's maybe a bad idea. But Or maybe there's a joint meeting where both of them talk about common topics. I don't know. But it's the, you've got to wire it that way. You can't have another layer of meetings. But it's got to be an expectation that once a year this is going to happen. And well, once I don't, or I'd like it to be more though. No, but I mean, just sort of like, like when, you know, because there's going to be there's going to be new people that are joining boards and committees every year. Yep. Um, you know, and, and obviously they're all having their meeting times, and you can't do it lots of times, but once a year, when the ask, you know, are, are, are you willing to come to uh, a Imagine Saturday Imagine once morning? a quarter we have a meeting with FinCom. We just get one meeting that lines yep. up, and, and another meeting a quarter we have it with school committee. And, and by the way, you can move it around if something more important comes, you can delay. But we're going to get a meeting in a quarter. But you design it that way as opposed to a special casey kind of a thing. If you think about it, if you did this in April and November, what you'd get <coughs> is you'd avoid the holiday season and you'd avoid the summer season mm -hmm. and you'd have marching orders from mm -hmm. town meeting as to, you know, we've got a certain idea going on, town meeting is going to give us, a, you know, their thoughts on whatever the topics are. And if you did a twice a year Saturday morning, and I think the VASC needs to, if we're, if that's something that we should do, and I think it is personally, the, that's a question that needs to start getting asked at the VASC. I mean, are you willing to commit, you know, two two hour workshops, you know, sure. you know, on a Saturday morning? Put the standard course. cover letter. We can approve that. Yeah. I I think that um, and we first started talking about improved communications with the boards, committees, and commissions to the board. Something I think that. Um, we already have two things in place to, to do that. We have liaisons. Now, certainly we can't make all the boards committee commission meetings that we're assigned to. We do our best. But we can also reach out to the chairs. And I, I said, we're, we're, you know, I'll, if I miss a meeting, I'll call and say, you know, fill me in on the, on the highlights <coughs> so that, um, and then try to report back here. The other avenue of communication is from, the ch the chair of each board committee and commission back to us and that that um, that does happen at least uh, on the <coughs> board that I was on previous to this one we learned our, uh, the, the lesson the hard way about passing a regulation uh, a board of health regulation without communicating to the board of selectmen and we 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 changed that I think um, the 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 need that I see is a way to for you know, if you move on to the Board of Health, on to CONCOM or whatever, to have some training for those people uh, when they get on. This is what, these are the regulations you're supposed to enforce. So they know about that or, or whatever. Nobody, when I went on the Board of Health, nobody told me these are the, these are the, here's where the public health laws are. Yeah. I think there's a, there's a bigger need than that, in, in my, my opinion, than, uh, another set of meetings. I'm generally opposed to more meetings, um, and and uh, no, I agree. so that all you know that upset. And then I guess my my question is this: um, is some of you have mentioned the silo effect. Um, now, the, per either the charter or the bylaws, I, <coughs> between it's either June 1st and the end, beginning of June, end of June, or beginning of July, end of July. I think I read that all chair you're supposed to reappoint chairs, and I was a little surprised to read that, and I'll, and I'll double check. So yeah, there shouldn't be that. there shouldn't be chair you know chair uh, you know repeating year after year after year, and someone having been chair of a committee of commission. I don't think it, it does say at that time, but I don't think it says that you can't. You can do it other times too, but I'm saying I don't think that there's anything in joining them from, right. you know, re-upping in yeah, the, the same in the chair. chair. It needs yeah, to be a guideline. True. You have to yeah. do the board right. flexibility. Right, right, right. Yeah. Yeah. And then what's the silo Finger. effect that, that we're talking? Can you give us some examples the of the silo effect? They don't have a dedicated staff. Uh, part of it is lack of staff. I think part of it is um, the focus is what I do, not necessarily how does what I do roll up to the larger organization, you know, uh, CPDC, ZBA, mm -hmm. working together on uh, the meeting we had with uh, 
CBDC and ZBA was just fantastic. We, yeah. you know, we got so much done in 30 minutes. We'd like right. to do that once a quarter. Yeah. But that, those two committees had a communication problem that had to get aired out right. yeah. at right. town meeting. I mean, you know, right. it got squared away and it was fine, but that's an example of the silo effect where, it's just you know, there's not really a, you know, I see. a yeah. communication yeah. going yeah. Yeah. back yeah. and forth. Uh, the issues are both large, which you're mostly thinking of, but they're also small. The, the meeting I participated in recently was ZBA, CPDC, and CONSCOM. And it wasn't about broad town policy, it was about a specific piece of property. Right. And the piece of property was going through three sets of hearings. Right. And they didn't really all know, well, we allowed this, and we were hoping you would do this. Oh, is that why that happened? Yeah. Well, and that also sends a message out to people who want to invest in town that's like, the yeah. people don't know what the hell they're doing. Right. Or it's a fire drill. You know, right. You, you go from so, pillar to pillar. And I, and I, and I got to put, I, it's going to add to my cost. At the staff level, we do a really good job, because they're here all day long, <coughs> of bringing in the you know, builder or whatever it is and saying, here's all the staff in a room. Let's all yell at you for an hour. Police, fire, you know, engineers, whatever. They get the full picture. But it, you can't do that with the nighttime boards. It's just not possible. Ideally, it would be great if there was some formula that said, oh, you're this project. So you're going to meet jointly with these two boards for these two nights, and then you're going to go separately. Every, every project is different. But more joint meetings are definitely a good idea. It's just the only way boards will meet jointly is if it's on a specific narrow topic, topic. not in general <coughs> philosophy. They don't have any interest in that generally, and they don't have the time. Here, okay. Well, I, I continue to believe that to the point that Barry has made, <coughs> a once or twice a year yeah. workshop for purposes of training and communication is and just knowing each other yeah i think yeah. you got it i really i'm going to say this for the fourth time in a, in a in in four separate years i really think we should be doing this um, i think it's on my goals this year so <laughs> you'll be the judge of that. i think the uh any economic development large opportunity is a perfect workshop for that to happen and that has to happen yeah right. that can't be risked to have so, so many of them are involved right they will be. So, okay. Anyways. Any other conversation? Any other discussion on the warrant? <laughs> we need a second and a vote on the warrant. Okay. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Se second. Barry seconds. Any further discussion? All those in favor? It is 10 articles. Yes. 5 0. Thank you, Bob. Thank you, Ray. Thank you. Thank you. Thank uh, that brings us to the close at the ripe hour of 9.29. If any other well, do you want to go over any of the rest of our, our, our section, or our licenses, Article 3? Um, you can all just email me private thoughts. Okay. I just jotted down notes. Where are we on our liquor licenses? What, I mean, what do we got left? Let me just go to the top. I mean, that's not part of the policy. Just curious. I mean, how many are there left to be yeah. um, issued? I'm sorry, John. Can you ask that So again? our liquor licenses. Oh, liquor licenses. Okay. Where do we stand? X'd out. I, there's like six out, <laughs> six left or seven left. I can't remember. And are any of those um, available to, we'll say, um, a convenience store for beer and wine or something like that? <coughs> I think those are done. Those are full. Package are stores are done. We only have restaurants. It's restaurants. Okay. I'm sorry, I missed the alcohol for part of your question. So, Bob, you crossed out Section 3.2 liquor license policy. Is that because, That's it's, because a it's complete? Right. Yeah. You guys have put that to bed uh, right. sometime right. in the spring. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, that's not the next page. This is page 3-2. Yeah. Oh, look at that. Page 3-14. Uh -huh. he, he, he skipped the I, whole I got rid of it. Seat. It just was not and necessary. And what do you have against uh, shirt sleeves? Uh, do I? I don't know where it says that. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. <laughs> you, there's some requirement for the taxi driver, I think, to wear oh, shirt yes, sleeves. Oh, yes. I thought that was silly. I, 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 <laughs> I think that's supposed to like a tank top. That that's a course. classic. Yes. That's great. <laughs> Made sense in 1942. Yeah, yeah, right. So it's good enough. No shoes, no shirt, no service. That's right. Um, the only other comments I had, I'll, I'll give you mine. And 3.1.1, your first bullet, the reason it might be, a pr the bullet might have appeared there, that sworn statement, is in the event that the applicant wants to provide one in lieu of, if there's a dispute over whether the monies have been paid, the applicants can swear to that fact. And you can always unwind it later. That first bullet. Also you asked why is it legal. I, I, I don't think it is, but if they offer it, um, 
it, to try to break a dispute over whether the bills are paid, and you can always unwind it later, right? It always says, have another meeting. Yeah, it says may include, right. but not limited. That's what I. So they don't what's have one to read do it. it. That's one. The next was um, on three dot one dot six. Um, your, your comments were these either weren't done or weren't always done. Is there a reason? They've never been delegated to the town manager annually, except probably twenty eight years ago. You mean by procedure? There'd be yes. a formal vote. Blah, blah, blah. Okay. I I don't know. We should either follow the rules or, or not don't have the rules. Exactly. We shouldn't have and rules. That's we really follow. up to you, not up to me. Um, I, I'm all for delegating, um, unless you can always undelegate if you're correct. not happy. So, yep. Um, not, you you can make a delegation that lasts more than a year. Right. It yeah. automatically renews. Mm. Just delegate. Just, just delegate. Just delegate. No term. And just so you know, I delegate that to the police chief because that's how life is. Right. Right. <laughs> Some of the right. things on the list are done. Actually, depends on that's all the liquor There's license. other things that go on. Well, the peddler's license, you know, there aren't many of those left. There aren't many guys going door to door. There aren't many people home during the day anymore. Right. Um, but, you know, I, there's still some. We still go have through people who go, department. we still have canvassers right. who come through for like They'll leave a flyer or something. They organizations. Does that come under this? Yes. Well, it's supposed to. They're supposed to get a permit from the police, have an ID badge. Yeah. And always and ask for a permit. We finally do. I mean, in, in the 80s, I used to canvass. Yeah. And we had to check in with the police department every day when yeah. we went. For Tell them where we were local going. Local canvassing? Um, or for other things? For other things, yeah. All yeah, the, commercial, you can't leave handbills on vehicles. We, we were knocking on doors. You could knock on doors. Through they could go a lot of places with that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the hour's late, though. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, um, what are the notes that I have? I, your there's, insurance point about this. There's two sections I wanted to ask you about the uh, entertainment licenses. Yeah, those are mm. really tough. I don't know what to do about that. Mm. You'd be either doing everything or nothing. Are they st are they still val I mean, relevant today or not? Depends on what your philosophy is to begin with. Um, I think I've given this example, but I'll, I'll do it quickly again. Um, those little whatever they are is that keep kids happy when you take them out to eat and you don't want to talk to them as a parent. <laughs> <laughs> Um, those, digital are, parents. those are legally entertainment oh, devices. That, yeah. right. So, I'll, you know, my, my restaurant has those and I have 50 because the kids and the parents don't like each other. Um, <laughs> I'm supposed to charge them an annual license for that, 50 yep. bucks. Not per unit. No. Th yes, that's yes, what, per unit. That's what the, well, I mean, it shouldn't be. Those little things that are at the... Uh, we need yeah. to... So, Isn't there discretion kind of? Well, I have decided there is in this one instance because that's not what you intended when no. you first wrote these policies years ago. There was, a, you know, some big thing in the restaurant, like whatever a it pinball was. machine, whatever, yeah. yeah, which you don't see. Pool much. table, whatever. <coughs> so it's just not current, I guess. I I we're ready to reconvene the discussion like around all of these. Pinball, uh, you know, entertainment. We have it may have been going to drop a lot of quarters. Right. Type but nowadays, thing. with the profusion of screens, right. and the entertain what does entertainment mean? No, is this no. entertainment? Mm -hmm. No. Well, and I don't think there are many of those. There's certainly none in Reading that I know of. Black pinball? Yeah, yeah like, mm -hmm. uh, was it, what's the word I'm looking for? It's a foosball, it is a foosball over it's a foosball here. Foosball. Yeah. <laughs> I don't, no, but yeah, I don't think they drop quarters. Stores that where you just go and there's oh, like, like a game machine. An arcade. An arcade. An arcade. An arcade. Don't they have some stuff at Jordan's? No, maybe not. They used to yeah, have the horse do. races. No, they don't have that. The point is, you want to really interfere. Either they have a million screens, yeah. and you're interfering with the business entity, and you really want to do that. No. And what purpose is served at the end of the day? And, and what's the amount of revenue for the amount of inconvenience? Yeah, the, yeah. The, the message is so bad. The juice yeah. isn't worth the squeeze. No. <laughs> and the, the only other part was about, um, you know, live bands and things like that. That's covered. Which we actually want to occur. Yeah. All right, so I, I'm clear now in your philosophy. I, you know, we can make suggestions and right. post this for a future hearing, and then uh, mm -hmm. All right. Ray will have a look at it. Thank you. I think yeah. that's it. Speaking um, of live bands, we have, um, there's that event coming up that our CASA is. Jams for Jake? Yes. Yeah. Oh, yes. Um, that sounds like a really That'll be on your next agenda. Great. Okay, I neglected to mention it, and I meant to. Um, mm -hmm. You missed I, that, our CASA meeting. You were busy, I was busy away. with it. Yeah, yeah. Um, that they've received tremendous play here. They went to a DRT. Yeah. It's a very exciting thing. Yeah, it, uh, it really is a good yeah. thing that's happening. Um, I know Rotary just decided to step up as a sponsor oh, as well. So um, 
Okay. It's a, yeah, it's a really good uh, thing. Ask questions every three or four days. Well, it gets the community involved, yeah. you know, in a big way. Um, we thought that the risk of this was they're not going to get 300, they're going to get 30,000. It's going to be Woodstock. Woodstock. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, thanks. That's all I have. Um, before we close, I, I just want to reflect on the comments Bob made at the opening um, for us. There's obviously nobody here left, although maybe there's a few folks still watching on TV. Um, there is a tendency to want to bring the challenges in the national form into our town. And uh, I don't know what the motivation is. I don't know what the perceived benefit is. Um, but I don't want to do that. We're 25,000 people, 17,000 voters, 10,000 households, plus or minus. And it's the size of a good-sized college. We know many of our neighbors and friends. And while we don't always agree, there's no reason I can think of to be disagreeable. We can certainly have a pleasant conversation. Tonight, you know, I don't know what to talk about tonight. It was very frustrating. It's clear that folks were um, interested in, in promoting fairly strong positions, and I'm aware of uh, what's gone on in social networking in town, and, and part of tonight was was orchestrated. And, you know, folks are entitled to their opinions, but I, I can't I, we just can't let the assertions that are incorrect lie. There's, there's, this board is the highest executive board in the town. We serve all. We serve everyone. <coughs> it really doesn't matter to me who they are or what they are or what they believe. We, we give everyone the same response and the same service. There's folks out there that want to divide this town, and I, I for one, am going to do everything I can to prevent that from happening. I, can I just offer a comment? Yeah. Um, I'm not sure exactly how this gets controlled or managed, and I'm, you know, and, and John, you're the chair. Um, <laughs> personal attacks from the audience uh, can't be tolerated, in my opinion. I mean, people can disagree, people can argue, people can question policy, people can question how we act on that policy. I'm 100% okay with that. We start naming names and coming after people we, personally no, as we to now their have, integrity. We now have a highly their... qualified future board of health member who has maligned potentially a future fellow member. Right. Now, now, how do we deal with that? I, I don't I know. Th the other, the other, there's a two-edged sword there, John. Yeah. I think you do need to let people talk for two reasons. One is yeah. folks at home who aren't here won't necessarily be able to absorb it. And to the extent you want to make a point, I think you got to give it context. If you shut it down immediately, I don't think folks at home can understand the entire rationale. So there's some judgment. And I, I occasionally get wound up too, although I try to con you know control it. We all do. You know, we're human, right? So people get wound up, and that's fine. You know, people can apologize later. Well, you know, I mean, we've had this experience in town meeting. Um, and it was, you know, roundly criticized, and it was called, yep. you know, back. And a personal apology happened right. um, from the floor, which, uh, you know, the fact that it happened and the apology happened, I think was highly appropriate. I do think it's really important that we can disagree all we want on issues of policy, procedure, you know, steps we've taken, judgment. I, I honestly think that, you know, bringing people into question um, personally who aren't even here. Yeah. I, I mean, how is that okay? Yeah. Well, we, it's, yeah. it's happened, uh, 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 you know, we, we've all, we've, I, 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 I've heard it a couple of times, probably for myself too, so I think we we're all human and we we're guilty of saying something about somebody who's not in the well, room I, at the I, time. I don't want to be, I won't right. allow you to lump me into that. <laughs> okay. Okay. Because okay. I have not done that. Yeah, okay. I won't speak about anyone that's I have so, not done so, that, right. you know, um, here at all, ever. To, <laughs> to move on, I think okay. that, um, uh, one thing I think th that that um, is important to do is uh, you know is to let people vent their anger and part of our at least I see as my role up here is to listen to their anger and then respond to it in a in a as a measured a way as I, I can um, and and I, I get that from my day job because be surprised at what people say to state workers sometimes. But we always have to respond in a professional manner. Um, and uh, I, th I think I, I wouldn't, I'm, I'm not, 
I think the word divided is overused, to, you know, divisive, <coughs> wanting to divide. I don't, I don't necessarily see it that way, John. Um, I think people are just expressing their anger. And then to put it in one final perspective, I don't know if you've, you guys have ever read John Adams by David McCullough, but a couple of times. Yeah. So, I mean, if you read what would have happened back in the late 1700s, uh, we got nothing on that. No, I, I mean, nobody's true. spitting on me with tobacco juice, and I'm not <laughs> taking my cane and, and we're getting whacking. close. So I think you know we're still <laughs> we're, we're well, still progressed a lot. Juice. We've still we've still progressed since the late that. since the. So do John I understand Adams you to say that. that we should tolerate? Personal attacks on people. No, 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 no. We need to adopt no, policies, that's what I'm Mr. Right. Chairman. I'm just trying to put uh, put it in perspective. There's a there's a one liner in the town meeting guidelines that uh, you're to avoid personalities and personal attacks. That needs to be in our section one of our policies for public comment, and right. we can come up with some other things. Listen, people are angry. I don't care if they're, they're angry. They no, come here, not, they behave you themselves. You know what? And 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 there are those in town who felt that yeah. people on this board act inappropriately in the past and were rude um, and you know it's out there um, our job I mean uh, we got to figure out how to build a bridge we got to figure out how to get people to stop digging in and to listen to one another I guess it starts with us um, you know but if people aren't willing to listen I, I, I don't know I don't know what else well, to do. Right. As um, long as they listen, I, mean, I think it's fine. As long listen, as you get a word. No, I mean, listen, we disagree. I mean, I've dis I mean, I disagreed with you last week, and and we've all gone to battle. But I'm not throwing a grenade at the Board of Selectmen. No, but you know how to do it. Right. right? I'm not throwing a grenade no. at the Board of Selectmen. No. Um, you know, not every, people are going to realize that they're not going to get everything that they want. Sometimes the answer is no, but that doesn't impugn the integrity of the Board. Right. Um, and, and, you know, that's that's what we have to live with. And, and that's, you know, I don't know how to do it. I really don't. Well, we're going to um, have to figure it out collectively. The other thing is, you guys all know we have multiple big problems to solve this year. Economic development being right. one, the question mm -hmm. of the override being second. There is a very good chance that this subject matter, if left to fester, if left to develop, it's if left to its own, will subsume yeah. all of the discussions. Yeah. It takes up all the oxygen. It'll take the oxygen say, right out of the and air. And people You're say, right. you know, listen, why do I want to give more money to a government that's dysfunctional? And many of the and people <coughs> speaking tonight are with that yes group. And so, Dan, it's not about, no, 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 Dan, I, you know, no, I'm not going there because yeah, if you look there. on social media, there were people who were on the other side who voted no that wrote some of the most disgusting things on social media that make me want to puke. It's both sides. I try to stay It's that both crap. sides. And so that, you know, and, and until we can get to the point where we get people listening to each other, um, there's nothing that we're going to do or say. We just have to go about our business defend the votes that we take, defend the positions that we take, um, use our best judgment and move forward. Um, but it, it's done in a, it, it's done right now in a, in a aura of just mistrust. Um, yeah, and yeah I think it's calculation by the other side. Uh, I really Dan, do. I don't know. Absolutely. Dan, Dan, Dan Garrett, that, that's... We have a culture war in this town. We Dan. have a culture war in this town. Time, time we Bob, don't. Bob? Absolutely. <laughs> One of the challenges you specifically face as a board is that something starts in social media and can get quite a lot of traction before you can that's address right. it formally. Right. That's you know? right. And that's frustrating for a lot of people. Um, we're kind of in an age of diminishing facts, but there still are some things that I think we agree with are facts. But when they're not presented factually accurate in the internet and they get a life of their own, there's no right. way to stop and them. That's people came, every people day came to this meeting so we're fired up to. with wrong facts. And, nope. and I've seen that it's in a so number of settings, and it's very frustrating it's for all the employees right. here, right. for you folks. And by the way, uh, we're all human, so w I've also come out with a wrong <coughs> set of facts. But unless the other s all sides are willing to entertain new mm -hmm. facts and say, oops, right. I was made a mistake, let me back, let me rewind that one back, I don't see that at all. Tonight I, I didn't, didn't see any willingness to accept nope. uh, oh. that an alternate I, I set just, of facts could be likely. I want to reiterate something that Barry said that struck a chord with me, and I think we we need to get right moving forward in the budget process. Is that you said? I'm paraphrasing here. This is a democracy. You don't always get what you want. You don't always get the government you want, but you still need to fund the services of the town. Um, yeah. And I think we need to. I'm trying to hold that in mind, mm -hmm. in the forefront of my mind, as we move into the budget process. Think you know, just.
just repair you said. I would say it differently. If we don't solve the, dis the discussion and dialogue problem, you yes. won't get this government that you need. Forget the one you want. Because you won't get the majority that concur. They'll be so torqued off, you just won't get it. Or people might not support a position because that guy over there is for it, and I don't right. like what he right. that he how yeah. he thinks. Yeah, we all have You're ideas. Absolutely right. About we all have that. ideas. We yep. all have good usually good ideas to offer now and then. And it, we all, I, I'm fine if people scream as long right. as they are willing to be told they're wrong and shown they're wrong and then apologize. But I'm not going to deal with grenade, grenade throwers walking in the room. But yeah, you have plenty of them tonight. I don't even care about apologies. I just care no. about when it becomes personal. I thought yeah. that yeah. I think it's highly inappropriate. Yeah. Exxon Kevin, that happens. You know, it. it's not appropriate, and they can. And look, if I'm sitting here and they want to yell at me, yeah. have a ball. Yeah. But, but but the, the attack was on our judgment. We have to recognize. Right. We have to recognize, though, in two meetings ago, uh, someone in in town staff referred to a former employee as a disgruntled employee. That's a that's a similar type of. Problem. I think we all get caught up with it. I don't think it's similar at all, Andy. But that's just my opinion. I think it's very different. Yeah, Remember, the town is the employer, and they can certainly, and there are people who've left, and the circumstances and the descriptions of the leaving might be relevant. Um, that's different from impugning somebody's personal reputation or naming them by name and calling into question their profession. I mean, oh really? yeah. I mean, really. By the way, I, I don't know what Kevin knows about board of health but I, I know he's smart enough to figure it out. And he may never be at the level of a PhD in that subject matter. He knows how government works. But he knows how government works, and he knows his way around, and he's probably more of an asset. You don't need 20 oh, PhDs okay. sometimes. You need three or four, and you need a bunch of guys that do all the detail work. Well, the, the other thing, if we're going to be talking about the Board of Health, I, I don't, you know, we, we haven't adjourned yet, have we? No. no. <laughs> This is, the, uh, this is the epilogue period. Um, <laughs> for a variety of reasons, I, I, I want to put forward the idea that we go through the charter and we increase the members of the Board of Health from three to five. Oh, I, I, I for, agree. For, for a number of reasons. One is actually the breadth and depth of the material where you need lots of individuals <laughs> with the subject matter and maybe one person who knows his or her way around how government works. That's number one. Number two, well, I don't want to get into number just, two just because... Redundancy. Because you know it's going to deal with a lot of just the the matter of the hearing. I don't Three want to. It's a discussion no. that you need it, to get up on the table. It's yeah. A, yeah. So and and and, and Bob. So in, in, enlighten us. Uh, <coughs> what's the enlighten process? us. What's the process? How does that happen? Um, <coughs> the Charter Commission's meeting soon. I think that's just an article yeah. of town meeting, right? Good. So and we just closed the warrant, so. It's appointed. By <laughs> well, that would have to get vetted yeah. by bylaw yeah. and all that. So. Yeah. Well, we're going to change the charter. There's a lot of vetting to go on to that, but we'll yeah, have to let's start the ball rolling. Oh, really? Yeah. Not all things that you can right. have the discussion. We'll have the discussion. Yeah. So, well, so right. how does that happen? Two minutes. Just we we need a discussion. Okay. Right. Well, okay. right. discussion over here. Yeah. yeah. Um, so with that said, um, and I hope for a better um, meeting on the tenth at nine o'clock. Um, uh, anyone entertain a motion to adjourn? A motion to starts at seven. Yeah. Sorry? The hearing will start on the 10th. So that'll probably be the last bit of business. Be the last right. bit of business. Hopefully the meeting be starts at 7. Correct. Yeah. Hopefully the okay. discussion Let's will be more civil. Motion to adjourn. Thank you. I have Second. a motion. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Right. Thank you. At 9.40 now.